just weren't right. So Neil Pursault put a pressure, as, as you do, as manager and the owner, to try and invest and wasn't having any of it. That relationship broke down. He was loved by the fans, the players loved him. So straight away, Darren Moore comes in and he's, it's, an up, it's an uphill battle. Mm. And I just don't understand why owners, and they're getting right to do what they want, they, they invest in the club, but surely they want unity with their ownership, transparency with the manager, with the fans, the players, and be united together. Because that's what David Wagner got this team to the, you no, know, with one of the smallest budgets in the Championship, got them promoted to the Premier League and kept them in the Premier League first time of asking. Well, he's made four changes today, the Huddersfield manager, and a lot of that is with regard to second half performances from players that came on against Coventry City on Good Friday. Let's hear from the Terriers manager. Despite that 3 1 defeat to the Sky Blues on Friday, he felt that there were positives that his side could take away from the game as they continue their quest for championship survival. When we are um, negative and um, um, uh, speak um, also negative about the performances about the players now, um, we have uh, the chance that we created a lot, we have to score and uh, for this you need hard work and also a, a portion of luck. But uh, you cannot uh, have luck uh, when you when you uh, don't win the duels. Du so we have to work for this and uh, then uh, I'm sure that we, um, yeah, that we can win games. So I believe in, 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 in that thing, and the players could see after the second half uh, that it's possible um, against uh, such a strong um, opposition like uh, Coventry. It was possible to, to, to play a draw in the last ten, uh, ten minutes, and uh, it uh, ever ends uh, when uh, when the referee takes his whistle. So um, we have to believe over 96 minutes, and uh, so maybe and hopefully on the Monday we are on the on the winner side. Now looking at the Huddersfield squad that Andre Brightonwriter has, and let's look specifically Chris Willemo, the 11 he's got out there today. Who's he relying on more than anybody else to help get them over the line? You <laughs> well, you're, you're looking at end product, aren't you? You know, there's not many in the in the league with a better delivery than than Sorba Thomas. You know, he he steps up with uh, his goals as well. I think Jack Rodoni is, is such an important player for uh, for Huddersfield. He gets on the ball, he can go and tackle. He's, he picks up intelligent positions. His distribution is very good. Uh, Radulovic has come in. Patrick Jones getting his, his first start. No, there's, there's not many goals here. There's not many no, goals. There's no there. goals yet for Radulovic, and certainly Jones hasn't scored this season. And then you look at where the goals are coming from, and that's why you look at delivery. Big Mikhail Hellick at the back. You know the top goal scorer, isn't yeah. he? Uh, he's, he's an absolute brute force in, in both boxes. Well, that uh, would tend to suggest that Huddersfield are a set piece team. Well, when you've got delivery like Sorba Thomas, there's nothing wrong with that if it puts the points on the board. You know, if, <laughs> if Michael Hellick goes on to score another three, four goals and they win the next, what, three, four games, yeah, that's job done. And then and then he, he gets, Brighton Ritter gets time to implement his style. He's basically come in, he's putting out files all over the place, he's spinning plates, and he's just trying to get the result game from game. He, he has no luxury in implementing his style, and when he has done, I just don't think the players are quite at the, the, the fitness level to, to go out and do what he wants them to do. Well, well, back to what you were saying right at the, the start of our introduction, yeah. that Andre Brighton Rice is concerned that the players are not fit enough to carry out what he wants the Terriers to do out there on the field, but they know that Stoke are a little flaky at home. The lowest goal scorers at home in the championship this season, I remind you, with just 14 that they've scored in front of their own supporters, with six wins, four draws, and nine defeats. Huddersfield aren't exactly prolific on the road. They've only scored 19 with three wins, eight draws, eight defeats. They've got the fifth worst away record in the championship players being led out now our match referee jeremy simpson and his assistant spoke in orange and black as bradford city equalized late on in a one o'clock kickoff at grimsby town in league two denver hume had just been sent off conceding a penalty that richard smallwood has tucked away grimsby who led by goals enough for long spells of that game have been pegged back right at the end and earlier today you heard it live on your home with the EFL TalkSport 2 Leicester City back to winning ways and back to the top of the championship for a few hours at least with a 3-1 win against Norwich City and what we should mention as well about that Norwich scoreline is it gives teams like Coventry City I thought right we can get right next to them in the playoffs Coventry are at home to Cardiff today 
at the uh, Coventry Building Society Arena. So Norwich's defeat has given a bit of encouragement to one or two teams below them, Chris. Yeah, and that's it. You know, I think uh, Coventry are, are flying in, in, in great form at the minute with an experienced manager that, uh, that knows how to get his team playing. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's for that little business end, that little run into the, the end of the season, it's all to play for. I mentioned Preston North End in that little lot as well because they're only five points off sixth and they go to Birmingham City this afternoon. I'll keep you in touch with goals as they go in around the EFL with a full programme in League One and Two kicking off at three o'clock. But let's run you through the lineups once again here at the Bet365 with the teams out and ready to get things going this afternoon for Stoke City. Daniel Everson is the goalkeeper. Kiana Herver, Michael Rose, Luke McNally, Jordan Thompson in a back four. Josh Lauren, Wouterberger, Lewis Baker in midfield. Mehdi Larice, Niall Ennis, Bai Junho in attack. For Huddersfield Town, Lee Nichols, the keeper. Looks like it's going to be Matty Pearson, Michael Hellick, Brody Spencer in a back three. David Kazumu, Alex Matos, Jack Rattoni, Jaheim Headley, Sorba Thomas, Bojan Radulovic and Pat Jones in attack and the handshakes are about to take place Josh Laurent just moving forward from the huddle in the centre of the Stoke half he will soon shake hands with Michael Hellick Stoke in their regulation red and white stripes with white shorts and socks Huddersfield in their chain strip of all black with just a little hit a little bit of a hint of blue around the shoulders and a little bit of red around the top of the socks and the Huddersfield fans away to our right in the Caldwell construction stand. Have come in decent number of good thousand or so, I would say. And there have been ticket offers for season ticket holders here at the Bet365 to try and boost the attendance here. Because it's not been full that often in recent times, has it, Chris Iwellamo, this place? Yeah, I, th I think the, the football club can do a lot more. Like, you know, the schools get free tickets out just to try and generate... Uh, an electric atmosphere here, you know, because they play a massive part. They're so important to the players and uh, uh, they need to feed off that. We have a terrific viewpoint up here at the back of the Franklin stand, as it's known now, at the Bet365. The booth and end to our left, which is the end that Stoke love to attack in the second half of games, and they'll get to do that because Huddersfield will get the game underway and they'll be kicking right to left as we look towards the booth and end, the Terriers and players will take the knee on the instruction of the referee, even though Bojan Radulovic and Pat Jones didn't get the memo <laughs> on that and tried to kick off. So our second exclusive championship commentary about to get underway here on TalkSport 2. Stick with myself, Ian Dancer and Chris Oelamo, and you won't miss a thing. We turn our attention to the relegation battle, and straight away Jack Radoni, who took the kick off with Bortha, Bojan Radulovic is dispossessed and Stoke work the ball up to Niall Ennis but the ball bounces off his chest and straight back into the path of Huddersfield Town, Ennis will again give chase as it's sent down the right hand side but Helic showing his strength putting it out of play for an early Stoke throw nil nil. Yeah you know I'm looking at uh, Wouterberger there, a little one blind pass just kind of hooks it in behind, you've got a, a willing runner in Niall Ennis who's, who, who may call those, Rodoni straight from the kick off, he's, he's tried to drive through about 6-7 players you've got to release the ball, turn them play in the right areas of the pitch So a throw for Stoke City to be taken by Kiana Herver who scored at Hulse, worked into the box Ennis with his back to play Again loses that to Helic, who just thumps it downfield for Huddersfield Town. Bright sunshine here in the Potteries. It was pretty miserable when I got here around midday, but the heavy dark rain clouds have disappeared. There's a few white fluffies above us, but a lot of blue sky as well. And about a third of the pitch is in shade, and that's the near side to us as the sun has gone behind the Franklin stand. The ball's back with... Luke McNally at the back for Stoke City. Michael Rose leaves it for Jordan Thompson to clip it down the left-hand side. Matty Pearson deals with it, but it's out on that far left-hand side, and it's Josh Laurent trying to work the oracle. Does he want to throw for Stoke? Yes, he has. Played a minute and a half on TalkSport 2. It's nil-nil. Throw's gone into the box, and it's held up by Ennis with his back to goal. Having to crawl out towards the edge of the area, Laurent puts it back into the box, hooks up in the air and drops a little back flick into the area that didn't quite come off there from Kiana Hoover 
and Huddersfield can't get the ball at the moment they've lost it again inside their own half yeah but Ian, that's a massive opportunity there. the ball comes in from the throw in Niall Ennis keeps keeps possession back and in being strong round about the penalty spot he's just waiting for someone to come in and support come in uh, arriving centrally into the D he can just set it for them to get the shot away Hoover works it infield for Berger now Baker for Stoke City gets it back to halfway and McNally strokes it out to this near touchline where Mehdi Larice picks it up for the first time this afternoon skips inside his man gives it back to McNally who chips it down the right wing, down this near side to us for Keanu Hoover. Good ball works inside for Berger. Tries to skip past a challenge or two. Pirouettes away from another challenge and works it out to the inside left position where Jordan Thompson looks to release by Jin Ho. Down the left hand side of the area, pulls it back to a great area, but Josh Laurent couldn't get onto it. And Huddersfield only get it half clear, nil nil. It was a poor ball from Jin Ho there, you know. I think Thompson and uh, Jin Ho linked up very well. He took it uh, in behind his defender, running across towards goal. He's got to just cut it back to Josh Lauren there, and he can get a shot away. Poor, poor pass in the end. Well, three minutes gone, it's nil nil, and it's all Stoke City. Huddersfield had barely had the ball in the Stoke half of the field. The goal's gone in at the Rodney Parade Stadium, Newport nil, Crawley one in League Two. Crawley. Just one point behind seventh place Gillingham in the last playoff spot before kickoff. Dion Conroy's given the Sussex club an early lead there. Every goal once again means something around Championship League One, League Two. Good atmosphere here today at nil-nil so far. Stoke fans encouraged by that start their team have made. Chris Uelamo. No, that's it. You know, I think the players they have a responsibility to give the fans something to shout about, and they're doing exactly that, using the ball very well. Uh, a little bit too patient in my opinion, I think they've had opportunities to put the ball into the box and they've, they've, they've chose to, to keep it and, 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 and try and recycle it and go around the other side. Herver looking to release Larice down the right-hand side, just slipped and the ball went over his head and Jaheim Headley will pick it up for Huddersfield Town and he's just clipped by Larice before he got to the halfway line and he wants to take the free kick too quickly for the referee's liking and it does look... Just looking to see what sort of system Huddersfield are playing. I mean, Headley's playing on the left-hand side, certainly, with Thomas. Is it a, a five or is it a four? Chris Amalo, well, we'll see when play settles down. It looks like it could be a five at times. Yeah. Jack Radoni certainly playing quite far forward this afternoon, alongside Radulovic with Jones on the right wing. So it's a very advanced role for the Huddersfield number eight in this system, alongside Radulovic. Good work from Niall Ennis, good tenacious work to keep possession and work the ball back into his own half for McNally and Rose. A bit goes to Bai Jun Ho, forced back into his own half. Good tenacious work by Brody Spencer, who you nominated before kickoff as one to watch. He's got pace to burn, Brody Spencer. Yeah, I just think he's, he's got that football intelligence as well, you know, great energy, end product. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's one of them. If, if they allow him to get into the game, he can cause all sorts of problems for Stoke City. Long kick downfield, sails over the head of Melly Larice and will just drift behind for a goal kick to Huddersfield Town, away to our right-hand side. Stoke got a 2-2 draw at Huddersfield in the reverse fixture in September. Daniel Johnson and Ben Wilmot got the goals in a game that they dominated, but Huddersfield managed to win a share of the spoils that day. That was Neil Warnock's last game in charge before he quit and Darren Moore came in. Morecambe won Barrow nil in League Two. Morecambe three points off the playoff places lead through David Tatonda. And in the National League, Eastley won Maidenhead nil. Aldershot won Dorking nil as well in England's fifth tier. Vauterberger for Stoke City at nil nil. Good ball out to the left hand side for Bai Jun Ho. Level with the edge of the area. Spencer watching him. Bai Jun Ho jinx in field, then plays a little flick, trying to get it away down the left hand side of the box for Jordan Thompson. But that's one back. Down the right-hand side for Huddersfield by Pat Jones, but his clearance doesn't make halfway. It's back with Stoke once again, Berger into the feet of Lawrence, who played up front, remember, against Hull City, which raised more than a few eyebrows amongst the Stoke faithful I saw on social media, but Stephen Schumacher was proved absolutely right in picking him in that position. He scored in that 2-0 win. Throw into Stoke level with the edge of the area on the far Left-hand side of the field with Stoke attacking the Caldwell construction end in this first half, away to our right-hand side. And Bai Jun-ho sends the ball back into the centre circle for 
Luke McNally just drops his shoulder to get away from Rodoni and Bajin Ho made a run through the centre of the field just to the left of centre McNally spotted the run but just overhit the pass along the deck and it goes out for a goal kick nil nil well I've got to say it's excellent play from Stoke City being really, really patient with it by John Ho as soon as he released it to McNally he made that uh, run in between the, the centre backs of Huddersfield and the, the ball was just a little bit it had to be fired in uh, but the accuracy just wasn't right Sorba Thomas back in the side today after a ban does really well on halfway but again Stoke snap of the ball back into their own possession and Niall Ennis lays it off a burger Lloris he's offside as he receives the ball on the right hand side even I could see that he was offside never mind the linesman I think it, Lloris he just tried to get as close to, to Ennis after he knew that he'd got the ball under control there and I think you've just got to have that experience as soon as Ennis goes back you've got to try and hold your run try and be expansive try and come out wide so you've got the full line in front of you he was he was about five six yards wasn't he if, if, if not even more so free kick for Stoke City it's actually been brought back for a foul before the ball was released to find Larice in an offside position so Jeremy Simpson's gone with the first decision he made Chesterfield already promoted back to the Football League but they're losing a home today in the National League to Kidderminster Harriers Ashley Hemmings for Kiddy early on Luke McNally gives the ball back to Daniel Everson I think that's his first touch of the afternoon in the Stoke goal and that's with his feet on eight minutes to get it out to Michael Rose Rose gets up to the halfway line he's then closed down by Patrick Jones works it into the centre circle and now it's out to Hoover on this near side the Stoke right little touch in from Jaheim Headley to win it back for Huddersfield, Radulovic, who hasn't scored yet since he arrived from HJK in January. Now Sorba Thomas getting away down the left-hand side just beneath us. Puts a cross in with his right, headed away comfortably by McNally. And it will reach Ennis inside his own half but near the halfway line. Trying to flick it back in field to his captain, Laurent. But it was one back by Huddersfield Town and then there was a foul which sees a free kick awarded for a push on Kasumu. Nil-nil, we played nine minutes on TalkSport 2. Very interesting there, you see that when uh, Huddersfield were in good possession down this left, uh, left-hand left side, they saw about Thomas and, and Headley, that, that every stroke get everyone back. Niall en mm. Ennis was very much isolated, so when, like you say, Michael Rose come through and put the head on it, you have to make sure that you've got that pace to go up and support him. Christian Willemo alongside me, Ian Danta here at the Bet365. Huddersfield free kick whipped into the box by Sorba Thomas, headed up and out by Wouterberger for the first corner of the game. And that's gone to Huddersfield Town as there's a goal in lead two, couple of goals in lead two. Tranmere one, Colchester nil. Kieran Morris gives Tranmere the lead against Beleaguer Colchester, who were one point clear of Sutton, but Sutton have just scored against Swindon at uh, Gander Green Lane. Charlie Lakin puts Sutton ahead. And Colchester have just equalised at Tramier 1-1, but it's so tight at the bottom of League 2 with Forest Green, Colchester and Sutton all scrapping to avoid those two relegation spots down to the National League. Here's Thomas with a corner for Huddersfield. Free header and 1-0! Matty Pearson heads Huddersfield ahead to give the Terriers hope, but it's been ruled out for offside. The flag has gone up against a Huddersfield player, impeding Daniel Everson. And the cheers of the Huddersfield fan turn to jeers, and the Stoke fans can celebrate as the goal is chalked off nil-nil. Very, very fortunate, isn't it? You're, you're looking at the, the Stoke players' reaction as well, and there wasn't really anyone arguing for anything there. Lingsden put his flag up. You know, very, very. They have to react against, completely against the run of play because Stoke have been completely dominant, haven't they? So it just shows you the, the threat of this Huddersfield side from all set pieces. Well, there's a warning. Yes. And Stoke City have survived that. Somebody must have been impeding Daniel Everson's view of the, the ball when it was headed towards goal by Matty Pearson. So it stays goalless on TalkSport 2. Herbert down the right-hand side, tries to get the cross in, it's deflected out for a corner kick by David Kasumu. Carlisle nil, Lincoln won. What a run Lincoln City are on. Got themselves into the playoffs on Good Friday. 14 unbeaten and Ben House has given them the lead at Carlisle, who could go down today to lead two. Corner for Lewis Baker to spot into the corner just down beneath us to our right, where the Franklin stand meets the Caldwell construction, away to our right. Walsall won Salford nil, Jamil Matt for the Saddlers. So a right-footed outswinger from Lewis Baker, Stokes' first corner of the afternoon at the bet 365. 
whipped into the penalty spot and headed over the top by Luke McNally just couldn't get over the top of the ball and it's a goal kick to Huddersfield Town, 0-0 it's an excellent delivery from Lewis Baker there as well wasn't it, you know you've got some real uh, aggressive players that can go and head the ball there McNally, you know, Wouterberger uh, Rose, uh, he just was, was hanging there wasn't he McNally, just waiting for it to come down got the contact but just couldn't get the direction Leighton Orient nil, Peterborough 1 Hector Kiprianu Hector the protector they call him the defensive midfielder he's given Posh the lead at Leighton Orient Posh been in a bad trot of form lately back to back defeats 10 off an automatic spot now with Derby County getting decent results of late but they lead by goal to nil at Brisbane Road here at the Bet365 Stadium on Talk Sport 2 12 minutes gone in our second exclusive championship commentary of the day and we're concentrating on the battle at the bottom Stoke City five points clear of the drop zone nil nil with Huddersfield who are in the drop zone out to the left-hand side it goes for Stoke and Josh Laurent the captain good ball in field for Wouter Berger 30 yards out to his right is Lewis Baker urged to shoot does shoot but it's a comfortable save for Lee Nichols right in front of his goal but that is an effort on target from Stoke City nil nil yeah again using the ball very well uh, Vision Ho is, is in the center of everything I just think Lewis Baker there, you know, don't listen to the fans, just keep possession of the ball, put it out to the right channel. The Medi Larice who's, who's, who's always wanting the ball, he's always presenting himself. Uh, like you say, never really troubled Lee Nichols in the Huddersfield goal there with a shot from about what, 23 yards, 24 yards. That's former Scotland striker Chris Owellamo alongside me, Ian Dante here at the Bet365. Free kick for Huddersfield Town, straight down the throat of Kiana Hoover. Couple of goals in League One, Cambridge just above the drop zone, lead Wigan by a goal to nil. Gasana Hadme and Bolton in the top three lead Reading by a goal to nil. Aaron Collins for the Trotters. Nil nil here as we approach the quarter hour mark at the Bet365 Stadium. Out to the left hand side it goes. Can Jordan Thompson keep it in play? No, he can't made a great run to get out there Morecambe have doubled their lead incidentally against Barrow in League 2 Gwian Edwards former Peterborough midfielder puts Morecambe further clear so tight in that race for a playoff place in League 2 so many teams involved in it and Gillingham are the team holding on to that final spot and they are goalless at Harrogate at the moment not many goals around in the championship as you'd have heard I've not made mention of any goals going in in England's second tier just yet although he nearly had one here but for a uh, referee's assistance flag which ruled out a Matty Pearson header for Huddersfield Town who are coming forward with Pat Jones on the right hand side and Rose comes across with a no nonsense clearance crew nil Forest Green one Jordan Garrick for Forest Green three straight defeats for them under Steve Cottrell but they can still get themselves out of trouble just as tight at the bottom of League two as it is towards the top Huddersfield in possession at 0-0 tucked back by Jaheim Headley for top goal scorer Michael Hellick nine goals this season centre half as a top scorer and he's coming forward with a good run works it out to the left hand side for Sorba Thomas deflection on the cross and Berger sticks his foot on it and puts it out of play on this near side for a Huddersfield throw about 10 yards from the corner flag, 0-0. Yeah, Huddersfield coming into the game a little bit more. You know, I think Stoke, that defensive line is, is dropped. It makes it difficult for the midfield. They've got to drop as well. Uh, giving too much respect, I think, to Huddersfield, allowing them to kind of get into the game and have a good possession of the, of the ball as well. It's just what they do with it. Well, Jaheim Headley's just giving it away to Keanu Hoover. And then a little nick from David Kasumu on Lewis Baker as Baker turned. Just got caught and it's a free kick to Stoke inside their own half, 0-0. Soft one that, I didn't think there was much in that, Lewis Baker, very fortunate there, when Headley was, uh, had every right to go for it. Oxford 1, Fleetwood 0, Oxford United out of the playoffs on goal difference only at the start of the day, they lead Fleetwood by a goal to nil. that's a tenth goal of the season for Cameron Brannigan, and that puts Fleetwood in desperate trouble towards the foot of the table. It's a game that affects both ends. Six points adrift are uh, Fleetwood Town and Charlie Adam these days. Great sliding challenge to win the ball back by Kasumu for Huddersfield. Slides it through to Radulovic, who was then dispossessed by Berger, has stayed down, but the referee says play on. Niall Ennis giving chase, and Michael Hellett gets there first, and he was being pushed by Niall Ennis, so it won't be a corner kick, it'll be a free kick to the Terriers, and Radulovic is very slowly picking himself up off the turf, 0-0. I 
I, I, I just cannot believe that that has been given as a free kick for Ennis. Just watch this in the monitor. Ennis is running in behind. Helic comes across and doesn't even look at the ball and puts the arm across the, 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 the neck, chest, chin of uh, Ennis here. I don't understand how Helic can get the free kick. Shocking decision. Well, free kick it is. And Jeremy Simpson's winding Chrissy Wellimo up at the minute. It's a good job Chris is at the back of the stand with me. Balls at the back with Huddersfield, clipped up neatly onto the chest of Pat Jones. He lays it off for Brody Spencer down that far right hand side in the bright sunshine on that side of the ground. Tucked back to Matty Pearson, who thought he'd given Huddersfield the lead a little earlier in this first half. We've played 17 and a half minutes on your home of the EFL. Talk Sport 2. More football to come later. Ipswich Southampton from 5.15 over on Talk Sport and then Leeds against Hull. Also on TalkSport at 8pm. Now Sorba Thomas, he got him behind Keanu Hoover for a moment, but then just held his run, which meant Hoover could get back goal side, and then in slides McNally to put the ball out for a Huddersfield throw on this near side, nil-nil. Well, nah, you're spotting again, I think that first touch comes back. You know, if he takes that first touch down the line, he's, you know, he's, he's basically pulling McNally out of, of position he's creating space for his uh, attacking uh, numbers as well and he's got the, the that end product that he can put in an early delivery as well so why come back and have to beat Keanu Hoover all over again well I wasn't sure whether it, it was the ball that didn't help him or whether just his first touch let him down either way Sorba Thomas had a lot of green grass to run into which he wasn't able to because of that first yeah. touch not County nil MK Dons one in league two MK just three points off automatic and they lead at Meadow Lane through Max Dean. Now, here's Jaheim Headley getting away down the left-hand side of Huddersfield. Slides it into the box, and it almost made its way through to Radulovic, but McNally put the ball behind for a corner kick. And we know what happened from Huddersfield's first corner kick of the afternoon. We've got another one here, nil-nil. Well, I'm just looking at uh, Keanu Hoover and Medio Lloris there as well. <laughs> I think Lloris had a proper go at him because that's a, another opportunity. Headley makes a, a timely run in behind, it was Helic with a little clip, it was an excellent ball, but he had so much time, and I think it was the wrong decision to try and whip it across, it was never going to make it in there for Patrick Jones, whipping it, you've got to drive, commit players, drive into the, that 18-yard box yourself there. Corner for Huddersfield at the booth and end, whipped in right-footed by Sorma Thomas, punched out by Everson, and he had Helic right next to him, it's worked out to the left-hand side and Sorba Thomas, but across comes his opposite number, Niall Ennis, and just hoofs it out of play and stops him getting the ball under control. The small margins will be in, isn't it? You know, Sober Thomas takes a poor touch, Ennis should just go and inter intercept it, he doesn't need to kick the ball anywhere, just keep control of the ball. Now Jaheim Headley runs into a bit of traffic, but Sorba Thomas wins it back for Huddersfield. Tucked into the box by Kasumu Rudoni, had made a great run, but that's well defended by Michael Rose this time. Huddersfield growing in confidence as we reach the 20-minute mark on Talk Sport 2 in this relegation clap, and you can hear the Stoke fans there responding, saying, come on, you started well, keep it up. I think that's important, isn't it? You look at that, I think Huddersfield have come into the game for the fact that Stoke have just... Now they've, they've dropped a little bit deeper, they're not moving the ball as quick as what they, they were at, at, at the start, and it is, the, the fans feed off how, 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 how much uh, control that you're in, and at the minute, it's, uh, it's, it's looking at Huddersfield are, are, are dominating. Loads of football to come, all 10 Premier League fixtures exclusive to us on TalkSport, TalkSport 2 in the app over the next three days, including West Ham Spurs, Arsenal against Luton, Manchester City against Aston Villa and Liverpool against Sheffield United. Just go to the TalkSport app that I'm sure you've got downloaded for your smartphone by now and there's a live games tab on the homepage and you can see how you can get all the games at any point on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from that round of Premier League fixtures, albeit Manchester City Villa on Wednesday night. Here's Radulovic getting up to the edge of the area, well fed by Thomas, goes for goal, it's blocked by McNally, almost came out to Radoni, Jordan Thompson got a vital foot in to get it clear. But Huddersfield are most definitely growing in confidence. Here's Kasumu now to the right-hand corner of the area, that's a wild effort from the edge of the box. We now two to aim at in the area, elected to go for glory. And it ends up being a goal kick for Stoke City, and it stays nil-nil on TalkSport 2. Well, it's far too easy to step down this uh, left-hand side for Huddersfield. Look at Keanu Hoover now, he's got that little limp. You know, he's not fancying it at all. You know, Sober Thomas got in behind there uh, far too easily, and then it was an excellent little pass into Radulovic, who, again, he's got three to beat. All of a sudden, everyone's backing off, off him, and he's, he's, he can do what he wants. 
what, 20 yards from goal. It has to be better defending, communicating, but I don't see Keanu Hoover. I think he's throwing one in here. You're listening to Stoke City nil, Huddersfield Town nil in the EFL Championship on Talk Sport 2 with McDonald's. Order Muck Delivery on the McDonald's app and get tasty rewards points. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Wouter Burgess has gone down holding his head and the referee's gone to check that he's all right. He's being helped back to his feet by his teammate Lewis Baker. No harm done. And it will be a free kick to the Potters just over the halfway line. And still we wait for a goal to go in in the championship. I haven't used my pen once <laughs> on that piece of paper. With all the games at Birmingham, Coventry, Middlesbrough, Plymouth, Rotherham, Sunderland, Swansea and West Brom. I'm trying to give myself commentators curse by saying that so that a goal goes in almost straight away, but it, it's not happened, at least not yet. Nil-nil here, but good tempo to the game, Chris Uwellamo. Yeah. And Huddersfield are better than they were in the first five or six minutes when they were struggling to get hold of the ball at all. Well, I think that's it. You know, look at the way that the Huddersfield are pressing now. It's a dangerous game. You know, Stoke were completely in control, forcing Huddersfield back and then picking up all the second balls. You know, at the minute, it was Huddersfield that they, they look like a team that's, uh, that, that, that's that dictating the, the tempo of this but game. Here comes Stoke, down the left-hand side with their captain, Josh Laurent. He's got Thompson on the overlap, feeds it to Jordan Thompson. Good ball into the area, headed behind for a corner kick. Good defending in the end there to put it behind by Alex Matos and Stoke have their second corner of the afternoon at 0-0 midway point of the first half yeah better quality from Stoke down that left that left channel John Thompson good energy in the end product you just want to kind of beat the Matos you know can you lift it you've got five Stoke shots and centrally you want to try and pick one of them out there but just I know he's trying to whip it but I think just kind of hang it up get your foot under it Lewis Baker with a right footed in swinging corner good delivery on it as well headed out from the six-yard line for Huddersfield by Michael Hellick. Jones trying to hold up and then bring it away down the left-hand side. He's trying to beat Wouterberger for pace. He did, but across came a good challenge by Kiana Hoover. I'm not sure whether he pulled up and might have strained something there, but it's a throw into Huddersfield anyway, nil-nil. Yeah, he's been touching his hammy for the last... Yeah, he's gone down there, isn't he, Hoover? And he, uh, he just sits down inside his own half, trying to take off his left boot or... Expose his left eye. It could be an ankle rather than a, a hamstring, I think, Chris Uwellamo, but he's gone down anyway and needs treatment. So it's nil-nil the score. 24 minutes gone on Talk Sport 2. Yeah, it's that'd be a disappointing one, you know, with the, the energy that, that he brings down that right hand side. But been saying that probably the last five, six minutes, Huddersfield are, are getting a lot of joy. Uh, maybe because he's not mobile, maybe because he's, he's he's carrying some sort of issue. Yeah, it's definitely the ankle, the rotating. Maybe he's rocked his ankle. Mm. Can't think. I can't think when. Uh, but like you say, Sorba Thomas, uh, Headley are, are getting a lot of joy uh, for the fact that he's maybe not 100 percent. Means all the other outfield players who come to this near touchline down beneath us to have a drink and have a chat with their respective managers. Stephen Schumacher to our right. Andre Brighton right to our left. What was I saying about no goals in the championship? That's changed. Coventry City lead Cardiff by a goal to nil. Ellis Sims, what a runner form he's on. 12 for the season now for the former Everton man. And Coventry, four points behind Norwich at the start of play because Norwich, as you heard earlier on TalkSport 2, lost 3-1 at Leicester. So they could be back within a point of the top six, Mark Robbins' men. They lead against Cardiff in the CCFT hashtag derby at the Coventry Building Society Arena. So that's our first goal in the championship. Over 50 live football commentaries across our network in April. What a month of football we got coming up. The scrap for the Premier League title. We've got those games Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in midweek. Title race and the relegation fight here in the championship. Five Premier League sides in European competition. The WSL title race. We brought in the Women's League Cup final on Sunday where Arsenal denied Emma Hayes the quadruple in her final season in charge and also in April the final day of League One and League Two with loads of issues to be decided so keep it talk sport and talk sport too and the very best live football comes straight into your ears courtesy of us here is Alex Matos for Huddersfield Town at nil nil good ball out to the right hand side looking for Brody Spencer he took a touch that kept it in play but that allowed Jordan Thompson to get across and put it out of play, down by the corner flag of the booth and end for a throw to the Terriers, 0-0. Yeah, excellent ball there from Matos, just switching the play, 
Uh, Brody Spencer always an outlet, as is uh, Sorba Thomas on the on the other side. Just poor touch, let him down, but he reacted well. And well, Huddersfield, you <laughs> seen that was poor, wasn't it? Well, the throwing came in from Spencer to Patrick Jones, who tried to take it on his thigh, roll the uh, not take take it on his thigh rather, roll the defender and get to the byline. But he had a trampoline in his thigh, so it bounced straight out of play for a, a goal kick. Newport nil, Crawley two. That's in lead to Crawley on the fringes of the playoffs at the start of play. Ronan Darcy has scored the second for Crawley. Back here at the bet 365, it's still nil-nil between Stoke City and Huddersfield Town. Five points between the two teams at the start of the play. Ball given away by Hoover, who's back on the field and is OK to continue. But Sorba Thomas taking him on. He might have hurt himself again there. Keanu Hoover, Thomas goes on the outside of him, pulls it back into the area, headed away by Jordan Thompson. Matos will keep it for Huddersfield Town, who are growing in confidence as this first half continues. And Hoover's really got to be careful because if he is struggling with that ankle, he's got a speedster in Sorba Thomas who can take the ball past him. But they've won the ball back, Stoke. Lawrence, lovely ball to try and release by Jin Ho through the middle, but back came a great challenge from Brody Spencer to take the ball off the Korean and bring it downfield. Rudoni for Huddersfield Town. There were claims for a foul on by Jin Ho by Brody Spencer, but Jeremy Simpson saw nothing wrong with it. Now the ball's fired across the face of goal by Patrick Jones, but too much on that goal kick to Stoke City. What did you make of that challenge on by Jin Ho there, Chris Uellamo? Nil just, nil. I just don't understand why Bay Jin Ho uh, went down. You know, it was a, an excellent ball from Loren as well. I'm looking at it now on the monitor. He's got the right side of Brody Spencer. He takes a, a, a decent touch. No, he's, the referee's got it spot, spot on. Brody Spencer, excellent defender. Yeah, there's a little. Now the arms are both touching each other. I think he's, he's looking for it. But yeah. why, why look for it? You've got the wrong side of the defender. You've taken a good touch. Just get your ball between body and man. Don't allow Spencer to come in and make the, the challenge. That's Chris Willemo. You can hear alongside me Ian Dante here at the bet 365. Stoke nil, Huddersfield nil. 28 minutes gone. What an afternoon for Forest Green Rovers. 3 deal up at crew now. Down the right hand side of the box for Stoke. It's fired across the face of goal by Lloris. But blocked behind by Jaheim Headley for Stoke's third corner of the half, nil-nil. Excellent play, uh, Lloris made up uh, Lewis Baker's mind there, a little ball in behind, and I've got to say, Jaheim Headley followed him all the way, very timely challenge in the 18-yard box as well, there was only Niall Ennis uh, in the box, so, but can can Lloris just get his foot under it and just dink up rather than try and go across, keeping it low and hard. Baker with the right-wing corner for Stoke City, right-footed out swinger terrible delivery straight into the near post and comfortably headed clear by Kasumu but nobody in one of those dark Huddersfield shirts to retrieve it on halfway so it's sent back into the edge of the box headed out by Radulovic back helping out his defenders and he has it again as the ball was fired in field and he finds Kasumu in the centre of the Huddersfield half early ball for Matos Matos has got help from Thomas on this near side goes back in field to Kasumu, Kasumu now looks to play the ball through to Thomas who just checked his run as he tried to burst in between Hoover and McNally at the back for Stoke and then Hoover gives the ball away trying to pass the ball over the halfway line along the deck and then a heavy touch from Larice and he slides in heavily on Sorba Thomas and he's going to get a yellow card for that challenge Mehdi Larice and Huddersfield will have a free kick just inside the Stoke half, nil-nil well, I've got to say it was a scrappy play from both I think you know I th no one could keep the ball under control just giving it away there, Lloris takes a big touch and again I think reacts, over commits to the challenge and yeah the referee spot on bringing out the yellow card from them there Sorba Thomas knew it was coming, managed to, to avoid it but still the contact and intent was there. Nil-nil here, crew nil Forest Green 3 then, quick goals from Jordan Garrick and Jamie Robson for Forest Green Peterborough 2-0 up at Lake Norian Efren Mason Clark as the free kick is swung in by Sorba Thomas flicked away by Wouterberger, won't quite go out for a corner on that far side but it's right by the corner flag where Huddersfield will have a throw Blackburn lead at Sunderland, Sammy Smodix, goal number 22 for Blackburn, who still haven't won under John Eustace but they lead at the Stadium of Light in the Mickey Gray derby this afternoon here on TalkSport 2 I've got Chris Owellamo alongside me former Stoke player, Stoke nil, Huddersfield nil Huddersfield have it again with Sorba Thomas down this near side the Huddersfield left whips in a right foot across it's too deep for anybody in those Huddersfield shirts and it drifts behind for a goal kick as Cardiff 
equalise at Coventry. That's 1 1. An own goal from Liam Kitching means it's all square at Coventry City. Goal kick to Stoke City, and Daniel Everson's going to receive it short from Michael Rose and then passes out to the right hand side of the box for Luke McNally, who played with Rose at Coventry last season when they were both there. Fired up to halfway, but come to with one back by Helic. Flicked on by Radulovic, trying to get Sorba Thomas away. And McNally with head, a header out of play when he wasn't really under that much pressure. And he's presented Huddersfield with a throw down by the corner flag. Nil nil. Well, I've got to say, I think Stoker just inviting Huddersfield on. Now, Everson, the, the Stoke goalkeeper, in possession, yeah. Schumacher wants him to pull out from the back. Huddersfield very aggressive, that front five, front six, on the front foot, trying to make it difficult. But the Stoke never got anywhere. And now they have to defend. Sorba Thomas down the left hand side of the area, found by Radulovic. He's got Hoover wrestling to win the ball back. Oh, a lovely turn by Thomas. Turns to the dead ball line, pulls it back. Attempt by Rodoni is blocked in the air. And it's volleyed clear by Stoke and Hoover up to halfway. But Ennis trying to win it back, loses possession. It's Huddersfield again. Sorba Thomas, left hand corner of the penalty area. Tries to chip it into the box for the run of Rodoni. That's come off a Stoke head. And it's another corner, sixth of the half, three each, and this is Huddersfield's third. Well, it's excellent bit of quality, isn't it, for Sorba Thomas? He's, he's dragging it to the, the, the goal line there, and then he's, he cuts it back. He gets his head up, and he has that composure to pick out Rodoni. And if it wasn't for a block from McNally there, then uh, Everson's getting asked a few questions here. But that's what I'm saying. When you're getting into attacking areas, especially in wide areas, don't just fire the, a blind cross across. Get your head up. I mean, the quality you've got, pick someone out. Thomas with the corner at the booth and end along the deck and there's a couple of players that have gone down in the box but the free kick has gone Stoke City's way with two Huddersfield players flat on their face inside that 18 yard box but it was a Huddersfield player that had committed the foul as far as Jeremy Simpson was concerned nil nil 12 minutes to half time on Talk Sport 2 Oxford have doubled their lead against Fleetwood Town at the Kazam Mark Harris making it Oxford 2 Fleetwood nil goal kick only finds the head of Helic, who would knock it back to the halfway line. Matos manages to keep the ball away from Josh Laurent, the Stoke captain. Sorba Thomas right on the halfway line. Tries to roll Keanu Hoover, gets helped out by Radulovic. Then Kasumi with a bobbling ball that bounces in the centre circle. And Bai Ho tries to lob it downfield first time for Laurent, but that was well dealt with at the back by Matty Pearson. Now Matos, good ball over the halfway line for Jack Radoni, who turned sweetly, got away for a moment, then feeds it down the right-hand side for Brody Spencer. Jones had made a run, that's who he tried to find, but he overhit the pass, Brody Spencer, at just 19 years of age. Not a great deal of experience at this level, and just panicked with that ball, and Stoke have a goal kick. And once again, you can hear the Stoke fans trying to give their team a bit more encouragement at nil-nil. Yeah, well, if you're looking at Huddersfield now, they're looking like the, 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 the football inside. You know, Rodoni, excellent bit of play, great ball to Brody Spencer, and it has to come back to Rodoni there. I don't know why Brody Spencer is head down, all, all, only looking at... Uh, at... Uh, Patrick Jones in front of him there. I think he just has to, has to be better. Rodoni's had a proper go as well, and rightfully so. Rodoni tried to play the ball through the middle there for Jones, making a run, but it was too straight and comfortably thumped clear, coming to the edge of his area by Everson, the Stoke goalkeeper. But Wouterberger can't keep the ball to play on the far side of the field. Chesterfield equalised against Kidderminster Harriers, 1-1 there. Matt Preston with an own goal. So it's as you were at the bottom in terms of the three sides who were level on points, two of whom are in the relegation zone, Sheffield Wednesday, Huddersfield and Birmingham, all nil-nil at the moment, so they're all moving on to 40 points, Plymouth, QPR, Stoke, Millwall, all drawing as well, so they're all moving on by a point apiece, only Blackburn of those sides in the bottom half of the table are in front, they lead at Sunderland by a goal to nil. Throw in for Huddersfield down this near side, Radulovic trying to turn his man, had a brilliant goal-scoring record, Bojan Radulovic at uh, HJK, 36 in 78 appearances. Former Brighton youth, another of your former clubs, Chris yeah. Wellamo. Yeah, he's a good player. You know, I think it just uh, shows you how competitive uh, the, the championship is. Good ball across from Lawrence to find Bajun Ho, left-hand corner of the area. Had to shield his eyes before he could finally pick it out of the sky. But then he's dispossessed, does he? No, he's been fouled by Kasumu, and Stoke have a free kick, about... 30 yards out, 
to the left of centre with nine minutes to half time on Talksport 2. Nil nil. Yeah, it was a better play there. I think uh, excellent touch from Junho as well. He took it out the, the air, but yeah, he's turned down the opportunity. He's created that little, manipulated the ball, created that yard to get the shot away, uh, and then he's turned back into danger. And the way that Huddersfield are, are, are playing without the ball, I, I, I've been impressed, you know, they're helping their players out, going two, three players around uh, Junho there. Well, Lewis Baker's favourite to strike this for Stoke City. The Huddersfield wall is lining up pretty much at the edge of the penalty area. That gives you an idea of how far out this is. Jordan Thompson's there too for a potential strike on goal for Stoke City. But Lewis Baker, the former Chelsea man, has taken a good three or four paces back from the ball. Up he comes, right-footed, and smacks it onto the angle of post and bar. Where's that going to land? In the side netting in the end. And it ends up being a goal kick. And Lewis Baker puts his hands behind his head. How close to giving Stoke the lead with an extraordinary free kick. Nil-nil. It was an excellent free kick, wasn't it? Up and over the wall, Paul's always moving. It went so high. Ian and it stepped last minute. Lee Nichols had no chance whatsoever. It's come off of the bar, and then it's McNally that gets the, the rebound coming down. Yeah, just just uh, to the right of the of the Huddersfield goal and it's came off his back and hit the side net in there I just don't think he could get there I think Spencer the defensively for Huddersfield had, uh, had covered that distance and made it difficult for McNally to get a clean contact seven minutes to half time on talk sport two Stoke nil Huddersfield nil goal number 23 for Sammy Smodix Sunderland nil Blackburn two now at the Stadium of Light and a big goal for Burton Albion who were just above the drop zone in League One they leave Barnsley by a goal to nil, Joe Powell for the Brewers and Northampton are one up on Port Vale. They've won their last two under Darren Moore, trying to get themselves clear of trouble. But Mitch Pinnock has put Northampton ahead at six fields. Here are the bet three six five at nil nil. Throw into Stoke, ten yards from the corner flag, left hand side, sent in by Thompson for Berger who tries a flick, but it doesn't come off. It's one back by Rudoni, plays the ball up to Radulovic, who held the ball up well, at least initially, under pressure from Rose, but the ball went out of play for a Stoke throw on the far side of the field eventually, and they've worked it back into their own half. Here's Luke McNally, finds Lewis Baker, whose free kick really was terrifically hit, and it must have smacked the poster bar at such an angle, it almost went straight up in the air and ended up landing the other side of the other post, the near post to us, as it went into the side netting. Super hit from Lewis Baker, but I'm not sure whether Lee Nichols would have had that covered had it been on target. Poor pass from inside his own half there by Lewis Baker, and he's running to his own teammate there, Mehdi Lloris, and then a strong challenge by Alex Matos, and a yellow card for that challenge in the centre circle immediately brandished by referee Simpson and it's a free kick to Stoke City inside the centre circle so that's one booking apiece now Lovely. Lloris for Stoke and now one for uh, Matos for Huddersfield yeah I'm looking at that and it's, it's not a free kick you know I think Matos actually gets a, gets a, a challenge a contact on the ball first and it's just that momentum then uh, that, that takes uh, by John Ho. So uh, the referee was this side of it. It looked like a strong challenge, but Matos was actually uh, first one there. Berger does neatly to keep the ball away from Rodoni. Five minutes to half time. Still waiting for the deadlock to be broken here in the potteries. And a crossfield pass from McNally tried to find by John Ho. In fairness to the Korean, he had to shield his eyes from a previous pass that was sent out to him. That was dropping out the uh, sky right into the sunshine behind the stand were sat in and he just couldn't get a handle on it and it went over and out for a, a, a throw in yeah well we can see it here the sun you know has caused a few issues uh, especially defensively for Stoke as well but uh, it wasn't a bad ball but when when you're trying to kind of pluck it out the air it does make it difficult Stoke coming forward into the Huddersfield half down this near side with Keanu Hoover poor touch in field from Josh Laurent the captain but Huddersfield couldn't get the ball cleared there was though a push on David Kasumu, so that will be a free kick to the Terriers, pretty much midway point of their own half. Yeah, Lewis Baker there, there was just no need to, to put any pressure on Kasumu there. You know, I think Huddersfield did overhit it anyway, and Baker just reacted to giving the ball away with that poor touch, uh, just trying to kind of get in the face there. The referee was spot on to, to call it back. 
Lee Nichols has the ball rolled back to him, the Huddersfield keeper. Clips it downfield for Radulovic, held it up well. Jones was running across the line but lost possession. In steps Helix, stepping in front of Ennis. And then he has a wild swing as he tries to take the ball off Valterberger's toe. And now running through the middle, Mehdi Lloris couldn't get past Matty Pearson at the edge of the area. What a challenge from the former Luton man to win the ball back. It's an excellent challenge defensively, isn't it? I'm looking at Lloris there, I think he's going to get there first. Matty Pearson's chasing him all the way and he goes to ground, but timely challenge on the ball as well. Fantastic, fantastic little ball in behind as well. Big goal at the bottom of the championship. Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield Wednesday 0. Michael Ihekwe has put the ball into his own net, so Borough lead against Sheffield Wednesday, who started the afternoon in the bottom three. 0-0 nil -nil here. Stoke trying to pull themselves further clear of trouble. Remember, Stoke started the afternoon five clear of the drop zone. Reading equaliser Bolton in League One. That's 1-1, one -one. Lewis Wing for the Royals. Stoke have the ball back inside their own half. Two and a half minutes of the first half to go on your home of the EFL, where it will all play out in April and May, whether it's the end of the regular season and, of course, the playoffs. Every single playoff match, semi-finals and final, will be live across the network as we find out who wins promotion and who has to fight another year in the same level of football. Gillingham lead at Harrogate, that's a big goal in that playoff push for League 2, Gillingham holding on to that last spot and they lead at Harrogate through George Lapsley up there in North Yorkshire here we are in Staffordshire as we approach half time, couple of minutes to go before we find out whether Jeremy Simpson's going to add any time on, it's a free kick to Stoke City, Everson thumps it right footed down the inside right channel, flicked on by Larice, but nobody had made a run ahead of him so it just bounced twice and through to Lee Nichols in the Huddersfield goal, nil-nil. In fairness there, you know, I think when uh, the ball comes from deep from McNally, uh, Ennis pinned in Helic very well, it allows Lloris to come and win the ball, so that's where you've got to understand that, that either Nijun Ho or Josh Loren, can you get in behind and be that, that supporting runner? Because Ennis has done his job, Lloris has won the ball, so there has to be a willing runner to try and get in behind and stretch Huddersfield. Rodoni bursting forward now for Huddersfield Town, gets to the edge of the area, tries a shot that's blocked by Everson, plunging down to his left-hand side. Rodoni gets it back, right-hand corner of the area, works it in field, Jaheim Headley takes a touch, slides it into the box, Radulovic looking to make room, scores brilliantly! Oh, what a goal! What a time to open your account for your new club! Bojan Radulovic has put Huddersfield ahead in the last minute of the first half, turning inside a defender and a right-footed curler that Everson could do nothing about. What a goal in the context of the relegation fight. Bojan Radulovic makes it Stoke nil. Huddersfield won. Well, it's an excellent goal, you know, taking the, and the one the signs were coming. You know, Everson makes that save from Radoni, comes back out to Radoni, keeps the ball well. I've got to say, I think his first touch, Radulovic, is, is outstanding. Skips round McNally, and then he puts it right into the top right-hand corner there. You know, Everson doesn't really get a chance, but I just it's far too easy. It's in the 18-yard box, so I understand you can't just throw yourself into the challenge. But, yeah, he skips round, doesn't really take any backlift from his, his foot, and just kind of guides it and just steals it in. Not power, just steals it into the top right-hand corner. It's an excellent finish from Radulovic. His first goal for his new club. He had a record of pretty much a goal every other game for HJK, but a really classy piece of finishing from the Serb in what is his eighth appearance, I think, for Huddersfield Town. And they lead as we have moved into three minutes of minimum added time at the end of this first half on TalkSport 2. Massive goal. You can't really say that it's came against the runner play as well. I think Huddersfield have grown into this game and, and, and controlling the tempo. Yeah, you're getting little flashes from Stoke, but they're at home. They started very well and they've allowed Huddersfield to get into this game. So we're into that three minutes. Good strong header from McNally to keep the ball away from Sorba Thomas, but Huddersfield will have a throw as Lloris, who is on the deck, trying to keep possession for Stoke and now Stephen Schumacher well who'd be a manager you win 2-0 at Hull City on Good Friday and all's well with the world and <laughs> everything's positive 45 minutes into the next game and you're about to go in at half time at home trailing to a team five points beneath you in the relegation dogfight this game does your head in sometimes <laughs> Niall Ennis giving chase he's on his own he's on his own 
and the ball's yeah. gone up. He he's is very isolated, you're right, Niall Ennis. He's having to work very, very hard. I mean, they played a front two against Hull with Ryan May and Josh Lauren in a genuine strike partnership. But they've gone back to a sort of a... Well, it's a 4-5-1 effectively at times, isn't it, Chris Wellamo? Yeah, it is. You know, I think uh, you're looking at... And that's that's what you've got to do. You know, I think the formation should change as, as, the, as the game's going on, depending on what battles you're winning and, and losing. Uh, but they've got the intelligence and they've, they've, they've grown into this game and now it's about making sure not to concede and keeping this, the energy levels the same, which is something that I've noticed over the, the period of time under Brighton Writer, that it's uh, as it falls away the second half. We played two minutes of the minimum three that are being added on, but there'll be a few more seconds because the goal went in as we ticked round past 45 minutes here at the Bet365. You're listening to Talk Sport 2, EFL Live, Stoke nil, Huddersfield 1. So Huddersfield winning, Birmingham drawing, Sheffield Wednesday losing. It means Huddersfield are out of the bottom three as things stand. And here's Sorba Thomas getting the afterburners on down the left-hand side. Rides the challenge and Lewis Baker got clipped. Free kick to Sheffield Wednesday, almost level with the Stoke penalty area. Well, you're seeing players for Huddersfield that are committed. Sorba Thomas ran about, what, 55 yards there with the ball. Lewis Baker ch chasing them all the way. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a poor challenge. You know, I don't understand it. You know, the, obviously, Jeremy Simpson, the referee, has is, is, uh, is, 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 is pulled it up as a, as a free kick, but it's just poor. You just want commitment. You know, I know it's you're, you're at home. Mm. I want to see some passions, the desire, communication. Go and, go and fight for everything, fight for the cause. Free kick taken short by Thomas. Works it down the left-hand side to Radilovic, down by the corner flag. They're killing time at the end of the first half here, not the end of the 90 by keeping the ball in the corner flag and there goes the half-time whistle and Stoke City's home hoodoo is for the moment continuing they find it difficult to score goals here and having won at Hull on Good Friday they find themselves behind at the break against Huddersfield who as things stand are out of the championships bottom three and what a classy goal for Bojan Radulovic to score to open his Huddersfield account late in the first half it was good work initially from Jack Rodoni, who found Radulovic in the box, first touch to drop his shoulder, sell the defender and fire the ball home. At the other end, Lewis Baker had a free kick, smack against the angle of post and bar. That's as close as Stoke City came in the first half. But most definitely, Chris Wellemo, Andre Brighton writer goes in at the break. Far, by far, the happier manager. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, especially with the way the game started, the first five, ten minutes, completely... Uh, uh, Stoke City were in control and then his, his players showed that experience I've got to say and, and, and controlled the game from then on you know you're looking at you're looking at the, the chance he's created but the, it's a ball retention you know keeping possession winning second balls doing all the hard graft and then having that quality to then bring in your, your quality players you've seen little flashes from Stoke you know Larice has caused a few problems uh, Jun Ho on the, on the left hand side has is, is, is always been an outlet mm. but then I want to see those relationships Keanu Hoover uh, having uh, getting around the outside Jordan Thompson at the other and creating for Stoke City but Brighton Wright will be happy it's just about keeping the levels up for the second half which is that which they've not had to answer for those questions Chris Wellemo alongside me for the ride this afternoon the boost you could hear incidentally the referee just making his way to the tunnel always gets it doesn't he no matter what the score is let's get off uh, to the game that will bring you to half past five over on talk sport because we're almost halfway through our exclusive championship commentaries for the day because coming up at 5 30 be a chance to look back at the top of the table ipswich against southampton leicester won today by three goals to one against Norwich City. Leeds don't play until 8 o'clock tonight, so there could be a whole load of musical chairs at the top of the championship before we're done tonight. Ipswich Southampton will be a 5.30 kickoff. Our coverage will start around about 5.15 on Talk Sport after Adrian Durham's read you a classified check. Joe Shannon and Dean Ashton will be your commentary team. Ipswich have been incredible this season, haven't they, Chris Malamo? Just what... Just, defying all expectations yeah just carry that momentum on you know I think everyone thinks so highly of Kieran McKenna I think team of the team of the season for me you know I think 
you know, you, you always say, oh, they're going to fall away. They went through that little rough period and that little blip in January. And then what do they do? They go and recruit. You know, they bring in Kiefer Moore, one of the, <laughs> the best January signings from our opinion in the Championship. I think Dean Ashton would agree with you on that. He joins us along with Joe Shannon at Portman Road ahead of kickoff. How you doing, fellas? All Hi, good. Dan. Hi, Chris. How you doing? Yeah, we're doing very well, thank you. Huddersfield lead here at Stoke. So we're looking at the bottom of the championship. You guys, with your commentary at 5.30, very much looking at the other end. Let's talk about Southampton, actually, first, uh, Dean, Joe, because they look set fair for automatic promotion, but they had a really dreadful blip. What, what went wrong there for Southampton, which is why they're off the pace now for automatics? I just think the standards they set were so ridiculous with that club record run, unbeaten run, that it was inevitable almost that when that when that stopped, there might have been just a, a, a tiny sort of um, dip in confidence, as you would as you would say. And, and ultimately, you know, you, you can't really keep that up. You you can't not in not in this division with how competitive it is. So actually, I think maybe we should be saying a little bit of that maybe Southampton slightly overachieved in that period, but they're still right there with the games they've got coming up, including this one this afternoon, Joe, they'll probably feel like they've still got a great chance. I think you're absolutely right, Dean, as well. Look, they made club history, didn't they? It yeah. was 25 games without defeat in all competitions. They'd never had a run like that before in the entire history of the club. Um, came to an end with defeat by Bristol City in mid-February. At that point, going into that game, they were second, a point ahead of Leeds, who were in third at the time, with a game in hand as well. But I think Dan Sazdeen has said, They'd set such a great standard for such a, a long time. Late September to mid-February, they were unbeaten. Hard to keep that up. And, you know, any team is going to have a, a potential negative reaction when they lose a game. And, of course, it's worth saying, Leeds and Ipswich have been pretty impressive since exactly that time. You look at the, the run that Ipswich in particular have been on. That's propelled them into a position where they'll go back to the top of the table with a win tonight, Kieran McKenna's team. So the standard at the top of the league has just been so impressive all season long. Lads, just quickly before I let you go, we've seen teams do it before, come through the divisions from League One through the Championship and then straight to the Premier League. I think Paul Lambert's Norwich did that. And there was a Southampton team that did that too. But would not this particular potential for Ipswich to do it be even greater than those two lads, given that the, the lack of resources, relatively speaking, that Kieran McKenna's had to call upon? I think so. I think it's it's quite incredible, the run that they've been on. And, you know, the, the doubters, they've had so many doubters throughout the whole period um, that everyone seems to just be waiting for, this can't carry on, this... This isn't right. You know, they haven't got the, the squad and the stars of all the other sides. So how can they still be up there? You know, they have, they, you know, maybe don't win a couple of games and, and everyone thought, here we go, that'll be it then. They've had their, they've had their, their bright moment and then they plow on again. And, and look, I, I know there's going to be plenty of jobs coming up, I'm sure, um, in the summer a managers look at and Kieran McKenna, whether he takes them up or not, he's going to be high on so many people's lists. I think he's just been <coughs> incredible, Joe, in the way that he's got the best out of some of these players. And I think, Dance, um, what makes it really special for me, this Ipswich team, and I'm not saying that, you know, that Southampton team under, I think it was under Nigel Adkins, 2010 to 2012, when they had those back-to-back -back promotions. Of course, there have been lots of exciting attacking football for those Southampton teams of, of that generation. But I just think the way that Ipswich have played this season, the fearlessness with which they've approached the championship, 81 goals and the resilience in this team as well. So often they've scored late goals at crucial points. The number of times they've come from behind to win games in the championship this season, I think it just feels like something special is happening at Portman Road. And if they can get the job done in the next seven games, then you've got to say hats off to Kieran McKenna for that. And Dean, did that comedy nose and glasses I gave you help to help you get into Portman Road unscathed? <laughs> just about, just Good. about, Stance. I think there was just one, one lonely old guy that just about recognised me as I was walking oh, in. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, they're the ones you've got to worry about. <laughs> Enjoy the game, boys. Thank you. Joe Thanks, Shannon Stance. and Dean Ashton, who are with us at Portman Road. Remember, that game is on Talk Sport. The coverage starts at around about quarter past five, kick off at 5.30, and then straight after that on Talk Sport, Leeds United against Hull City. Lucy Ward will be alongside Jim Pratt for that game at Ellen Road to round off our four exclusive championship commentaries. Half-time classified in just a moment and then full second half commentary from here at the Bet365 Stadium where the score at the break, Stoke City nil, Huddersfield 1. 
EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Bring on an iconic double act. The classic bacon double cheeseburger and a side of fries. Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. Search kayak for great deals on flight. Wait, that doesn't say flights. Search kayak for great deals on car hire. Hmm. With Kayak, you can compare hundreds of car rental sites to find great deals. Even better, you see costs up front. And if it's flexibility you're after, Kayak's got a handy free cancellation filter. Lovely stuff. So, next time you're searching for flat car hire, car hire, at home or for your holes, search Kayak and go see for yourself. When Magnus started out as a carpenter, he used a manual saw. First, he made tiny chairs, then dog kennels, and then a duplex treehouse. But when Magnus was asked to build a suspension bridge, he had to leave his manual saw behind and embrace something better suited for the job. Manual saws. They're kind of like the bank account you use for your business. Just because they were right once doesn't mean they'll be right forever. Maybe it's time to switch with the current account switch service. Got a paintwork scratch, bumper scuff or minor dent? Want it fixed like new? Of course you do. At Chips Away, we don't judge, we just fix it. Enter a few details online for a free, no obligation estimate. We'll come to you or you can visit one of our car care centres. For professional, affordable car body repairs with a lifetime guarantee, visit chipsaway.co.uk. Chips Away, like it never happened. We've all been there. You start some DIY with great intentions, then 50 minutes later your face is red, the air is blue and your hair is getting greyer by the minute. That's a job for the Trust a Trader professionals. Let them get that list ticked off while you relax with a cuppa, safe in the knowledge that every trade person's passed the Trust a Trader 15 point assessment. <sighs> Find the Trust a Trader professionals at Trust a Get an expo guide to all the latest speculations, signings and spending sprees with Simon Jordan's Football Business Roundup on TalkSport with Tesco Mobile for Business. From the latest deals worth knowing to where the big money transfers are going, get the inside track in one all-covering football finance feature. Simon Jordan's Football Business Roundup on TalkSport with Tesco Mobile for Business. Join Tesco Mobile and get business phone bills for up to 40% less than the big mobile networks. Tesco Mobile, every little helps. For applicable terms and verification, see tescomobile.com slash Business. Wednesday night, the Premier League live on Talk Sport. And he's gone straight in! Arsenal versus Luton. What a great bit of play. Coverage from 7, kickoff, 7.30. Wednesday night. On live football dynamo, Talk Sport. PGA Tour, Valero Texas Open, live on TalkSport 2. Thursday night from 10. As the world's golfing elite go head-to-head -head at TPC San Antonio, hear full swing-by-pitch-by-putt commentary of all the action, direct from Texas. PGA Tour, Valero Texas Open, Thursday night from 10, live on TalkSport 2. On DAB+, online, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. EFL Live on TalkSport 2. This is Game Day exclusive on TalkSport 2. I'm Ian Danta at the Bet365 Stadium. Let's take a classified check on all the half-time scores on this Easter Monday. Starting with... This is Game Day. Half-time classifieds. Sky Bet Championship. Full time, you heard it earlier, live on TalkSport 2, Leicester City 3, Norwich City 1. These are all half times. Birmingham City 0, Preston 0, Coventry 1, Cardiff 1, Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield Wednesday 0, Plymouth 0, Bristol City 0, Rotherham 0, Millwall 0, Stoke 0, Huddersfield 1. Full second half commentary to come here from that game right here on TalkSport 2. Sunderland 0, Blackburn 2, Swansea 0, QPR 0. West Brom nil, Watford nil, Ipswich Southampton kicks off at 5.30 live on TalkSport. Leeds Hull kicks off at 8pm also live over on TalkSport. Skybet League One. These are all half times, Blackpool nil, Wickham nil, Bolton two, Reading one, Bristol Rovers nil, Shrewsbury nil, Burton one, Barnsley nil, Cambridge one, Wigan nil, Carlisle nil, Lincoln one, Charlton nil, Stevenage nil, Cheltenham nil, Exeter nil, 
Leighton Orient nil, Peterborough two, Northampton one, Port Vale nil, Oxford three, Fleetwood nil. Full time from earlier, Grimsby one, Bradford one, these are half times, Crew nil, Forest Green three, Harrogate nil, Gillingham one, Mansfield Accrington was postponed, Morecambe two, Barrow nil, Newport nil, Crawley two, Notts County one, MK Dons one, Stockport nil, Wimbledon nil. Sutton 1, Swindon 0, Tranmere 1, Colchester 1, and finally Walsall 1, Salford City 0. There you go, you're bang up to date with all the half-time scores, and I'll keep you updated during the course of our second half commentary here as to other goals that go in that can have massive effects and implications right throughout the EFL. Stoke City players already back out on the field, Huddersfield players just emerging from the tunnel down to our right hand side so Stoke will be heading for the booth and end that they always like to do at the start of the second half of matches and uh, I can see that Sead Haksabanovic is being ready to come on right at the start of the second period here Chris well a moment just looking to see who's missing from that Stoke lineup at the moment I can see Everybody, Niall Ennis is out there, so it's not a striker replacement. Bajun Ho is out there. Bit of a guessing game, I can't work it out. Who's missing? Louis Baker. It could be Louis Baker. Yeah, I can't see him. Well spotted. Yes. Ten points to Chris Uwellamo, <laughs> spotting the missing player. So, yeah, Louis Baker goes off, and on in his place comes Sead Haksabanovic who is on loan from Celtic and he only has one goal to his name so far this season that was against Bristol City back in September so he comes on and that may well change the way that Stoke line up here in this second half could be a genuine front partnership between Haksabanovic although he can play out on the right hand side can't he Chris Uwellamo yeah I think bringing on an, an attacking player was, was definitely the the, the thing that had to be done because uh, Ennis was just on his, his own so isolated all the time and I think Lewis Baker okay or, or other than a couple of decent corners and the free kick you know he's, energy wise I don't really think he brought too much to the game so hopefully Haksabanovic can come on and make a positive impact so back underway on Talk Sport 2 Stoke in the red and white stripes white shorts and socks heading to the booth and end away to our left as we look from our commentary position right on the halfway line at the back of the Franklin stand Sorba Thomas wins a free kick. So the Stoke lineup: Everson in goal, Herva, Rose, McNally, Thompson, Laurent, Berger, Larice, Haksabanovic, Bajun Ho, and Ennis. As for Huddersfield, Nichols in goal, Spencer and Thomas are the wing backs: Pearson, Helic, and Headley, Kasumo, Matos, Jones, Rudoni, and Radulovic. Here is Patrick Jones. Darting down the left-hand side of the box for Huddersfield. Oh, it goes through a crowd of legs on the six-yard line and nobody could get a touch. Drifts out to the right-hand side and Huddersfield retrieve it. What an opportunity for the Terriers right at the start of this second half, inside the first minute. It's out on the left-hand side with Sorba Thomas. Swings it in from deep, brought down offside. Radulovic tried to finish, but the flag had long since gone up against the Serb. But that crossing from Patrick Jones seemed to magically evade everybody in there Chris Iwellow he done ever so well didn't he you know I think to take it to the line and then just get his head up and, and cut it across it went through everyone it came to Haksabanovic and he's thinking do I touch it and he just had the awareness to just let it go but then Radulovic finds himself in an, in an excellent position great first touch you can see the confidence is definitely there with the big man Radoni down the Huddersfield right they lead by a goal to nil here at Stoke and Radoni taking on Michael Rose Lays it off to Patrick Jones. Gets to the byline, pulls it across again. A dangerous ball from Jones, this time from the Huddersfield right. And Brody Spencer was in there, and he was near post, he was closest to it, but he just couldn't get the finish in there. 1 0 Huddersfield. Well, Patrick Jones is just showing he's, he's having a little go at Radulovic as well, and rightfully so. You know, he's playing across that attacking line. It just shows you first one was left foot, this one was right foot excellent quality getting at his man being direct and end product as well right on the money Huddersfield have been awarded a free kick about 20 yards into the Stoke half of the field to the right of centre it'll be Sorba Thomas to take it right footed real good delivery over the head of Radulovic 
put up in the air by McNally. Keeper comes to claim inside his six-yard box and gets it well. Bowls so it out under on to Bajin Ho and Stoke can try and counter. But a foot in by Alex Matos and then Patrick Jones puts it out for a throw. And the Huddersfield fans, you can hear, roar their approval for that bit of defensive work inside Stoke's own defensive third. With and without the ball, they've been better. You know, you're looking at... Uh, Bajan Ho there, just trying to kind of get the ball down, keep possession, but getting caught because out without the ball, Huddersfield have got two, three players trying to go and win it back, and it's uh, it's been impressive. Well, I think back to what you said to me, Chris, before the game about how leggy Huddersfield looked in the second half of the game against West Brom uh, that you were talking about, was it? Um, That's right, yeah. And how different the performance was. Can they keep this level of intensity up for Andre Brighton Writer? They lead Stoke by a goal to nil. They're going out of the bottom three in the championship as things stand and dumping Birmingham City into the drop zone. Birmingham nil-nil with Preston. Sheffield Wednesday, the other team in trouble. Losing at Middlesbrough at the moment. Ball's rolled up to Niall Ennis for Stoke. Given away by Ennis on halfway, you can hear the moans and groans around us as Huddersfield, Huddersfield are starting the second half well and getting the first to many second balls. It's just the little things, you know, Ennis series under no pressure whatsoever, great first touch, but then the, 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 the layoff is just not enough on it and just giving the ball away, but it's happening all over. You know, you're looking at Loren now, getting all on the ball in the, that defensive uh, midfielder role, but he's not, well, not still can't moving it quick enough. Has to be better. Intensity all over the pitch with a passing. Haksabanovic works it out to the right hand side. It's dropped for by Jun Ho, who would just flick the ball out to the left hand side. Bit of space for Jordan Thompson on this near side. By Jun Ho's gone ahead of him now, but Thompson's moved in field to the centre of the half. Laid back to him by Larice. Jordan Thompson again plays it out to the right hand side. A touch from Kiana Hoover brings it into the box. Left foot in effort. What a goal! Kiana Hoover! Two in two! for Keanu Hoover and Stoker level within five minutes of the restart. Super left-footed strike. Lee Nichols grasping for thin air. Only Stoke's 15th goal at the Bet365 this season. But you won't see a better one. It's all square. 1-1. One, one. What a goal. What a goal. I've got to say, he's come in. It's came from nothing whatsoever. Jordan Thompson taking responsibility driving centrally and then he gives it to uh, Keanu Hoover and he's got nothing on I'm saying they can take put, put it across and you've got bodies in there just takes it on to his left opens up the left hand goal but he's still got a lot of work to do in he just steals into this into the top left hand corner and goalkeeper has no chance whatsoever what a finish into his second loan spell from Wolves at Stoke City Keanu Hoover got four goals last year that's his third for this season with that strike and what a different stadium the bet 365 is now all square and Huddersfield pegged back but here they come the Terriers down the left hand side with Sorba Thomas but he's got two players around him one of whom is the goal scorer tracking back to nick the ball off him so 1-1 by Jun Ho darts over the halfway line out to the right hand side and Larice gives it back to by Jun Ho in field Haksabanovic in acres of space on this left hand side Larice tries to lay it off to Bajan Ho. He's been dispossessed. Wants a foul. Nothing doing, says Jeremy Simpson. And Kasumu bursts through a couple of challenges. And then he's hauled down by Luke McNally on halfway. And that is going to be a yellow card for the Stokes centre half. 1 1 on Talksport 2. Great start to the second half here. Yeah, excellent there. Uh, good play from Huddersfield. Kasumu's breaking. He's got the full half to run into as well. And McNally just has a little tug, and rightfully so. I think he took one for the team, knew that it was coming, but he had to take Kasumu down there. But yeah, much better. Listen to this place, you know. When you when you when you show a little bit of clock, Keanu Hoover, I've never seen him do that in the first half. No. After he got his goal, broke his neck back and and and, and helped uh, Josh Loren out defensively. Thomas with a free kick for Huddersfield, just shy of the halfway line, drills it downfield, but onto the chest of Walter Bergen, volleyed away by Haksabanovic, it will go out of play for a throw. Goals going in elsewhere, Sutton have doubled their lead at home to Swindon in their bid to stay alive in League Two, Jack Bycroft with an own goal, making it Sutton 2, Swindon 0, Lincoln have a second at Carlisle, that's 2-0. Joseph Taylor for Lincoln, going to go 14 unbeaten. Brilliant run that Michael Skubala has been on, the former Leeds United coach, since taking over at Lincoln City. Notts County 2, MK Dons 1. They've come from behind to lead at Meadow Lane, Notts County. Alessandra Jatta with the second for Notts County. 
and here come Huddersfield with Patrick Jones dispossessed down this near side by Jordan Thompson Bauter Berger just toe ends the ball away from a challenge but it's won back by Shaheem Headley who tried to thread the ball up to Radulovic inside the area but he drove it so far way ahead of anybody in a black Huddersfield shirt and out of play for a goal kick yeah again it's Huddersfield without the ball excellent Stoke overplaying in that defensive third I think Jaheim Headley was the right pass to play just couldn't get that uh, accuracy of it Radulovic was watering it just wants it to feet there Medi Reese for Stoke finds Haksabanovic in the centre of the Huddersfield half Huddersfield in their change away strip of the black shirts with little flicks of blue and red around the shoulders defending the booth and end that Stoke are attacking as they love to do Blackburn 3 nil up at Sunderland Ryan Hedges for the third surely that's the first three-point haul in the John Eustace era at Blackburn to ease relegation worries there Chesterfield won Kidderminster 2 Zach Brown puts Kitty back ahead of the promoted Chesterfield and Cheltenham big goal for them they lead Exeter by a goal to nil at the completely Suzuki no win in seven in the first of those relegation spots two points behind Burton at the start of play <coughs> but they have the lead through Ben Williams on Bolton have a third against Reading's now 3-1 John Daddy Bodvarsson for Bolton who started the day in third Stoke coming forward and forcing Brody Spencer to head the ball out of play on this near side for a throw and Chris Willemo saying get on with it which Stoke tried to do and they've almost conceded a corner Huddersfield but Matty Pearson's header down went the right side of the corner flag from his point of view and Stoke have a throw down the left hand side as they're attacking the booth and then two are left in this second period all square 1-1 and all to play for I just have to say I think Stoke City just have to start things a little bit quicker you know Haksabanovic has an opportunity to take a quick throw in and really uh, put uh, Huddersfield under a little bit more pressure but they're allowing them to set up get into position you know someone I want to, I want to see a bit of aggression someone taking control Hoover with a cross it deflects in the air Haksabanovic brings it down on the six yard line but couldn't get past Brody Spencer and then he fouled Spencer in trying to win it back and Huddersfield can clear their lines almost broke for sale Haksabanovic but he just couldn't get the ball under his spell 1-1 well, he doesn't have to get the ball under control I think you can just take the, take the shot on you know you're, you're seven yards eight yards from goal on the angle just make sure you get a good connection with the ball uh, and steer it goalwards there's that many bodies in front of Lee Nichols a little deflection there not even a deflection but you can, you can cause problems a couple of changes being made and Ryan Mai is coming on to replace Niall Ennis for Stoke City and also coming on is the wonderfully named Million Manhoof, who moved from uh, Vitesse in January, hasn't scored yet. Netherlands under 21 international. So that's three changes made by Steven Schumacher. Haksabanovic came on right at the start of the second half. Now two further introductions with Mai and Manhoof on the field. It just shows you the, the quality uh, of depth and depth as well that, that Stoke City have. Uh, a lot of these players come in and not really hit the, the floor running, not really got up to speed with what the championship's all about. And yeah, you, you just it needs to it needs to be corrected. Burton Albion won Barnsley, won Barnsley equalised through John McAtee at the Pirelli Stadium. Uh, Medi Larice was the other player that went off, incidentally, along with Niall Ennis for that double change that saw Manhoof and Mai come on. Balls played behind Brody Spencer as Huddersfield tried to break down the right hand side. So it's going to be a throw for Stoke City down the left-hand side. Ipswich Southampton to come over on Talk Sport at 5.30 for our third commentary of the day across the network. And then at 8 o'clock tonight, Leeds against Hull. Plymouth nil, Bristol City one. Plymouth in relegation trouble and Bristol City lead down at home park through Naki Wells and Exeter equaliser at Cheltenham 1-1 there Luke Harris Haksabanovic for Stoke City at 1-1 here 57 minutes played on TalkSport 2 finds Jordan Thompson left hand side back in field for Haksabanovic tries to play a 1-2 at the edge of the area Helix slides in strongly to get it half clear but it's back with Stoke Mai tries to nutmeg Brody Spencer but he gets it clear looking for Radulovic on halfway but he couldn't control it and Stoke have it back 
Well, you look at the changes that Steve Schumacher has made. But here's Hoover coming forward, fancies another goal. What's well, three and two, but this one he snatches at somewhat and drags a good four or five yards wide. One one. Just look at the attacking area of, of, of Stoke. Look at the players that are there. You've got four or five players with uh, Bai Jun Ho in behind. He's going for it. I understand why he's going for it, but he's leaving himself a little bit light. But it's something that Huddersfield aren't saying, right, okay, let's just keep doing what we're doing, get on the ball and we'll take advantage. A couple they're of changes. They're, they're actually coming back and trying to defend and it's creating more space for the likes of Lorraine and uh Wouterberger. A couple of changes for Huddersfield and the goal scorer is going off. Bojan Radulovic and Reese Healy is coming on to replace him. Had a groin injury that's really kept him out of the, the team for a long time, but he scored the consolation against Coventry City. So he's on. And uh, Delano Bergsorg is also on. The two players have gone off. One is Bojan Radulovic, as I mentioned. The other is uh, Pat Jones, who put some lovely crosses right at the start of the second half. Yep. Didn't have any joy from those. Worked hard for his team. So Healy gets his first touch on halfway. Breaks for Bergsorg, the other substitute. And now on this near side, Brody Spencer. Little back heel into Haksabanovic and out it goes for a throw. Sunderland nil, Blackburn Rovers four. Tyrese Dolan really putting Sunderland to the sword this afternoon. They are not enjoying life up there on Weir side. Throw into Huddersfield Town at 1-1. It goes straight out of play by Wouterberger for another Terrier's throw. More live football in the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Premier League fixtures, all ten of them exclusive on National Radio to the TalkSport network, either on TalkSport or TalkSport 2, or on the app. Dead easy to follow whichever game you want out of those ten across Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Whether it's on the app exclusively or whether it's on TalkSport or TalkSport 2. I'm going to be at the Etihad Stadium on Wednesday night with... Troy Deeney to watch Manchester City against Aston Villa after Manchester City dropped two points yesterday in that 0-0 stalemate against Arsenal. Harrogate 1, Gillingham 1 in League 2. Anthony O'Connor equalises for Harrogate. Stoke lose out to Reese Healy, who's barged into by McNally, and that's a free kick to Huddersfield. He's got to be careful, McNally. He's on a yellow card, but the referee's decided the free kick is enough punishment. But this is a free kick about 25 yards out, and pretty much just to the well, pretty much central, just to the left of centre. Somebody's going to fancy a crack at goal here for Huddersfield Town. 1-1, one, one, an hour gone. Yeah, I'm looking at that, and I'm, I've got to say McNally's a very lucky boy because he should be getting a yellow card for that as well. No intent in the in the play, and you can see the Huddersfield uh, players all get round uh, Jeremy Simpson there and express exactly that, but very dangerous free kick, and there was no need for him to give it. No re need for him to make the challenge. He was running away from goal. Well, Jack Radoni has put the ball down, and the Stoke wall has got to come back a few paces just inside the 18-yard line and uh, Reese Healy who's just onto the field of play he fancies a go here as well both him and Rodoni standing either side of the ball Rodoni to the right of it Healy to the left who's going to take the strike on goal there's a draft excluder behind the wall by Jin Ho's the unlucky man that's got a lie on his side for this free kick and the referee just checking to make sure that nobody's obstructing in front of goal. Rodoni will take it left-footed, and it's only just whistled wide of the post by half a yard or so. And it's a goal kick to Stoke City over to our right-hand side. 1-1 one, one the score on TalkSport 2. Yeah, well struck. I'm looking at uh, Daniel Everson there. He was comfortable, wasn't he? I think he knew exactly where his, the post was and it was going wide. But like you say, I think uh, like Steven Schumacher has to just have a little think about McNally. I think when anything else now, I think he's going to receive a, a yellow card. So you've got to look at the bench, haven't you? 61 minutes gone. Huddersfield in possession. It's Stoke 1, Huddersfield 1 on Talk Sport 2. Clip down the right hand side. It's out of play for a Stoke throw. Cambridge have a second against Wigan as they try and get themselves further clear of the drop zone. They've got their first win in eight last time out. Of course, Gary Monk, the manager at Cambridge these days, and Gasana Hadme has their second of the afternoon. And his second as well, more to the point. Huddersfield winning possession inside the centre circle. Tucked back by Headley for 
Kasumu, then Healy out to the left-hand side for Sorba Thomas. Bergsorg making a good run down the left-hand side of the area. Comes in field Delano Bergsorg, good strength from him. Still faced up by defenders at the edge of the area. Healy takes over, looking for quick feet from him, but Stoke win it back. And Laurent releases Ryan Mai up on the halfway line. Mai has to go back into his own half and looks for his right back Hoover and somehow his forward pass snaked its way through to Josh Laurent but Manhoof can't win the ball for Stoke inside the Huddersfield half and the Terriers have it back Reese Healy on the far left-hand touchline looking to win a throw maybe now he's been dispossessed Stoke have it back again but then Rudoni steps in shows good strength to win it off the Stoke captain Josh Laurent and Rudoni has it again down the left-hand side of the penalty area trying to play it in between two Stoke defenders but Stoke did enough to get it half clear Bai Jin Ho lays it off and Manhoof is shoved to the ground and finally plays stop for a Stoke City free kick and the fans love it 63 gone one apiece yeah it was scrappy wasn't it no real real poor play and then obviously uh, as soon as the Stoke got good possession of the ball I've got to say it was a, a poor challenge here from uh, Kasumu there, He's, he should be receiving a yellow card. I wonder what uh, sort of partying Chesterfield have been having just lately, because they're now 3-1 down at home to Kidderminster Harriers, having won the title, Matt Pearson getting the third for Kiddy. But Paul Cook's side will be back in the Football League next season. Walsall won Salford one in League Two, the league that Chesterfield are rejoining. Matty Lund equalises for Salford City. Here at the bet 365 nearly 20 minutes of the second half gone anybody's game this it's 1-1 Chris Uwellemo but you can see frailties in both sides that could allow other teams to score well that's it it's just about who's who's has that a little bit more uh, again patience a little bit of bravery as well you know too many times the, the play go forward to the numbers as well Bai Jin Ho finds Bauter Berger making a strong run Berger's through the middle tries to poke it past Nichols got stuck in Nichols feet and then he was bailed out by his defender Pearson who put it behind for a corner great run Bauter Berger but he couldn't get the power he wanted behind the shot 1-1 well he's done everything right Bauter Berger his first touch was excellent what I don't understand is why he's toe poked the ball he can go with either foot he's just tried to kind of take it early he had no reason to take it early because he'd got in behind the defensive line I think he's just got to come round that and just try and steer it into the either you can give the people the eyes go near post or try and find that bottom left hand corner but there's no reason to, to toe poke it there Haksabanovic going to take the corner kick on the far side at the booth and end for Stoke City lofts it to around the six yard line McNally heads it to the far post back across it might drop it's headed off the line by Rodoni McNally again was in there and Jack Rodoni on the goal line headed away to keep Huddersfield level and now Sorba Thomas oh he's pulled back on halfway by Haksabanovic surely that's a yellow card for the substitute indeed it is and it was his corner that caused chaos in the Huddersfield box but Rodoni to the rescue for Huddersfield 1-1 well the corner came in I think it was Rose that got, to, got the first contact. I think McNally kept it alive. Uh, great save from, from Nichols. And then he's down, but he's up again. Rodoni on the line. Uh, goal line clearance. Excellent defending. But again, massive opportunity for Stoke City. Huddersfield's free kick. Thomas swings it up to the edge of the area. Goes beyond Hellick. Pearson brings it down. Tries to help it across the area. A bit awkwardly. It's cleared away by Stoke. By Jun Ho chasing after it but he's beaten to it by Alex Matos who gets it back to his goalkeeper Burton 1, Barnsley 2 Barnsley hanging on to a playoff spot they lead, John McAtee has his second of the afternoon to turn it around at the Pirelli throw into Huddersfield Town meantime on this near side to us just to the right of Stephen Schumacher's technical area Kasumu turns away from Manhoof, plays it into the feet of Healy, could have turned and gone for goal but elected to give it back to Kasumu, out to the left hand side, Sorba Thomas who's been dangerous all afternoon, hits the ball against Herver, doesn't go out for a corner, he's kept it in play, tries to whip it in right footed, blocked by Hoover, out for a throw on the far side to Huddersfield, 1-1. It's an excellent battle isn't it in that left hand side for Huddersfield, Sorba Thomas, great quality, you know he's, 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 he's tried to take Keanu Hoover left, right, excellent defending followed them all the way got the first block in and again he's just watching the ball all the time excellent defending from Hoover Rodoni tries to get to the throw in first Kasumu went down but it was 
well dispossessed by by Jun Ho then the ball hit the referee and he stops play and he just wants a word with Luke McNally who's just had a bit too much to say for himself and he must be sailing very close to a second yellow card the Stoke City number 23 he's just got to have the experience not to kind of get in the ref's face understand okay I think the referee was allowing it to play on and then called it back when it did then uh, fall into Stoke's favour uh, but you don't get in the referee's face, especially when you're on a yellow card and he's just let you off with one. Massive goal at the bottom, Birmingham City 1, Preston North End 0. Jay Stansfield has put Birmingham ahead at St Andrews. And Cambridge 2, Wigan 1. Wigan get a goal back at the Abbey. Marshall Godo against Cambridge. And MK Dons have equalised at Notts County. That's now 2-2 two -two in League 2. But here in the Championship, we're locked at 1-1. One -one. Watford have got a second at West Brom. Mieta Rajevic has put Watford further clear. That's better from Watford, who've been so poor. But they've got a good point against Leeds on Friday. Excellent, they were. Absolute fantastic performance. You can see that uh, Tom Cleverley's tweaked some things there and he's got a reaction. The players have really bought into it. It's 1 1 here at the Bet 365. So Huddersfield back in the bottom three with that Birmingham City goal from Jay Stansfield. Harrogate 2, Gillingham 1, Gillingham hanging on to that final playoff place in League 2, have been put behind at Weatherby Road, Matty Daly with Harrogate's second of the afternoon, it's 1-1 here, just gone past the midway point of the second half, anybody's game, you just sense that jeopardy at either end that could go in either Stoke or Huddersfield's favour at any time in this game, it's right on a knife edge for me. Here's Jaheim Headley finding Kasumu for Huddersfield Town. Great work from Baijun Ho to win it back for Stoke. And Manhoof is away down the right-hand side. Skips inside Jaheim Headley. The space for Haksabanovic who picks it up now in the centre of the half. Lays it off for Berger. First time pass to his right for Lawrence. Lawrence spots Hoover on the right-hand side. He delivers the cross just over the head of Mai. Headed up in the air by Pearson. Drops at the edge of the six-yard box. One back by Haksabanovic, but only temporarily. Flicked up to halfway, but it won't find Bergsall. Stoke have it back, and the crowd get involved again. It's going to be clip four for Haksabanovic. Plays a little one-two with Baijun Ho. Then Baijun Ho is barged over by Kasumu. Referee says play on. Manhoof on the right-hand side, the far side of the field from us. Gives it in play via McNally to Michael Rose on the halfway line. It's swung out to this near side now. The left and Jordan Thompson now Ryan Moy, lovely ball out to Manov in space, right hand side of the penalty area plays it in for the run and it's clipped into the goalkeeper's hands good run from Kiana Hoover it was after a second of the afternoon but couldn't quite get the shot past Lee Nichols but it is a throw yeah, moving the ball very well, aren't they? Stoke City controlling the game at the minute, really pushed uh, Huddersfield back. You know, Mammoth and uh, Q, uh, Ken Hoover linking up well. Manhoof down the right hand side of the penalty area, skips past his man, drives it, goal was blocked behind by Hellick for a Stoke corner at the booth and end. 1 1. Yeah, excellent for Manhoof. Then he go out his man, he's in the box, he's manipulating the ball, got round him, just opens the goal a little bit, but. I think it was at Rudoni, was it, that got in with the block there? But it was it, it, Lee Nichols uh, never had to, wasn't asked to save the ball there, but fantastic quality from Manu. So a corner kick for Haksabanovic to strike, where the Boonther there meets the Tar Mountain stand that's opposite our commentary position. Right footed out swinger to come from Haksabanovic. Lots of movement around the penalty spot. Here comes the delivery, looking for the header that's wide from Rose and goes behind for a goal kick. Goals going in elsewhere. Another Liam Kitching own goal. Two own goals, and Cardiff lead 2-1 at Coventry in the Championship. Late Norrigan get a goal back against Peterborough, that's 2-1 Ethan Galbraith. Barnsley 3-1 up at Burton now. Luke O'Connell with a third for the Tykes. Crawley 3-0 up at Newport, Lawrence Maguire and QPR lead at Swansea massive goal again at the bottom Steve Cook with the goal for QPR at the Swansea.com stadium Sutton second bottom in League 2 3-0 up on Swindon Harry Smith with the third goals flying in this afternoon and they all mean something that QPR goal, the Birmingham goal does not do Huddersfield or Sheffield Wednesday any favours in their battle to beat the bottom here 
in the championship as Stoke come forward with Sayad Haksabanovic at 1-1 left hand corner of the area drove in field and tried a shot that deflected off a couple of bodies there were claims for handball there but nothing doing said the referee Huddersfield try and clear and Reese Healy's after a loose ball but great starting position from the goalkeeper Dan Leverson for Stoke to get it out of harm's way Berg's off for Huddersfield on halfway plays it downfield uh, West Bromwich having to get a goal back against Watford West Brom won Watford 2 Brandon Thomas Asante Rotherham lead Millwall they're pretty much doomed Rotherham but they do lead Sebastian Revan against Millwall so here's how it looks at the bottom of the table at the moment Rotherham are bottom they should be on 25 points with that goal they've just got as a couple of changes are being made uh, Ben Wiles is coming on to replace Jaheim Headley and Jack Radoni is coming off as well and Ben Jackson is coming on to replace him so Jackson at the back and Wiles a bit further forward for Huddersfield Town but at the bottom so Rotherham are bottom of the pile but they are on 23 points Sheffield Wednesday 39 Huddersfield 40 Plymouth now occupy fourth bottom 41 Birmingham winning at the moment 42 Millwall losing 44 remember they're losing to Rotherham Millwall Stoke on 45 points which would still therefore be five points clear of the drop zone 73 minutes gone so just over a quarter of an hour to go it is Stoke 1 Sheffield uh, Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 and here is Jordan Thompson sliding Sayad Haksabanovic in down the Stoke left as they attack the booth and then skips in field past Bergsall, rolls it along the 18-yard line, gets it back, Haksabanovic from Mai gets to the dead ball line and can't pull it back for a teammate and it goes behind for a goal kick. And the chance passes for Stoke City and Lee Nichols gets it restarted very quickly to try and find Sorba Thomas but only finds the head of Luke McNally. And that's headed out of play for a throw-in, 1-1. It's an excellent play from Stoke City there. You know, Haksabanovic seen a lot of the ball. A little give and go with Bajon Ho. And you know what? He, he's just caught between two things. Does he get the shot away? Does he pass it across? It's a little bit of trickery to try and get it round uh, the oncoming uh, Pearson there. But it has to be end product. Work Nichols or pick someone out. Middlesbrough 2. Sheffield Wednesday nil. Isaiah Jones putting Sheffield Wednesday in further trouble up there on Teesside 1-1 one, one here at the bet 365 there's a winner for either of these two teams although Stoke have had the better of it in the last few minutes and they have it again with Bajin Ho good ball rolled in field Vatterberger finds Manhoff offside he was looking along the line but not looking hard enough free kick to Huddersfield 1-1 one, one. yeah it was poor from Wurtelberger you know excellent little break as well Mammoth is, he's on he shouldn't be offside in fairness but Wurtelberger should know that he's got uh, he's got Loren and Haxavan oh sorry Haxavanovic and Thompson uh, at the other side so he's just got to open up carry on the attack and then commit the defender and release at the right time but he doesn't have to take it first time there free kick for Huddersfield Town then Qu quarter of an hour to go on Talk Sport 2 you're home with the EFL and the ball's going to go out of play for a Huddersfield Town throw you're listening to Stoke 1 Huddersfield 1 in the EFL Championship on Talk Sport 2 with McDonald's order McDelivery on the McDonald's app you get tasty rewards points 18 plus terms and conditions apply Chris Oelamos alongside me Ian Dadza here at the bet 365 Chris's old stomping ground and Stoke have just a slight more advantage in the game they just feel like they're slightly on top here yeah I think they've taken taken control back haven't they does that do you put it down to Huddersfield not really having that energy the, they've dropped off well you talked about it before kickoff what have Huddersfield got left in them for this final 14 minutes or so Haksabanovic meantime for Stoke passes it along the halfway line to Berger he works it further across to the right hand side and Laurent slides into the path of Manhoof out on the right wing Jackson looking to close him down little pull back to the edge of the air looking for Bajan Ho it was Herver in there again trying to get involved but it's gone to Huddersfield who clear downfield and Reese Healy won't beat Luke McNally to the ball Plymouth are down to 10 men at home to Bristol City they're already 1-0 down they're now a man down Alfie Devine's had a second yellow card two lemons make a strawberry he's off Huddersfield trying to win possession on the halfway line 
but it'll drop awkwardly for Ben Jackson but he did well actually and found Michael Hellick who will get out to the left hand touchline drive it downfield and suddenly Sorba Thomas was away but again brilliant starting position from the goalkeeper Daniel Everson to get there first and put it out of play for what in the end is a Stoke City throw at 1-1 well I, I thought he was onside you know I was waiting for the, the linesman I think uh, Stephen Schumacher now is having a proper go at the fourth and the linesman uh, but it just shows you you know if you're throwing everything at it and bodies uh, forward you're leaving holes in behind you can't do it no I think uh, Huddersfield are uh, definitely a threaten there and behind 1-1 one, one here 13 minutes to go our next commentary is over on Talk Sport that's at 5.30 Ipswich Town taking on Southampton just break off for a moment as Ipswich are coming downfield but it's cleared away by Matty Pearson so let's get the team news for Ipswich against Southampton your match commentator on Talk Sport will be Joe Shannon Two changes for Ipswich, Burgess and Jackson come in, Edmondson and Broadhead drop to the bench. Three alterations for Southampton, Bednarek, Aribo and Fraser all start. Walker-Peters, Smallbone and Suleimana among the subs. Ipswich go top of the championship with a victory tonight. It's Ipswich against Southampton. Top man Joe, thank you very much. Dean Ashton will be alongside Joe Shannon. That's on TalkSport, remember, so switch over using your TalkSport app or your digital wireless or whatever to talk sport at about quarter past five and you'll hear full commentary on that game followed in quick succession by full commentary of Leeds United against Hull City at 8pm also on talk sport with Jim Proudfoot and Lucy Ward Ian Danter and Chris Awellimo with you at the bet 365 just over 10 minutes to go one apiece between Stoke and Huddersfield at the other end of the championship table from the end that Ipswich and Southampton occupy balls back with Luke McNally inside his own half the two managers at the edge of their technical areas both looking a little nervous looking a little jittery a goal for either side so costly for the opposition lovely run by said Haksabanovic drifts up to the edge of the area feeds Ryan Mai in the edge of the D now Bajin Ho left hand side of the box tried the drive and a Brody Spencer flew into a challenge to put it behind for a corner but Millian Manhoff saying I was in acres of space right hand side of the area why didn't you find me 1-1 one, one. yeah it was again great play Haksabanovic driving through really kind of taking his players on and then he releases it to Ryan Mai at the end and edge of the box, you know, he should just open up or take a one touch and get a shot away, release Mammoth, Manoff. But uh, yeah, he's, I think he's got one thing in mind there, just get control of the ball, create that yard and get the shot away. And just never presented itself. Another corner at the booth and then, then for Stoke City at 1-1. It'd be a right-footed in-swinger from Sead Haksabanovic. Lots of players in and around the six-yard line. It's played short to the left-hand corner of the box. Thompson lofts it in, headed out by Helic doing his defensive duties, headed up in the end, Hellick gets there again at the edge of the box, and then Manhoof is dispossessed, down the left-hand side by Ben Wiles, he's trying to play the ball through the centre for Bergsorg, but that's too far ahead of him, and Everson again, swiftly out to the edge of his area to deal with the danger, 1-1 it stays, 10 minutes to go. Now Wouter Berger, was under pressure from Bergsorg, but there was an offside against Bergsorg, coming back from an offside position to win the ball, free kick to the hosts I just think when it's as blatant as that the linesman's flag has to go up earlier you know again Wouterberger is a coming together you, can, just, you don't want players getting injured mm. I've got to say Everson there excellent play now as a, as a goalkeeper you have to sweep up at the back but not only just kick it anywhere kept control and kept looking possession as well given away by Michael Rose to Sorba Thomas on halfway now Healy working really hard went to ground wants a free kick off Jordan Thompson and says get up nothing wrong with that challenge referee says play on and away comes Millian Manhoff down the right hand side Mai waiting for a cross everybody else in Stoke Red and White is holding back he finds Haksabanovic at the edge of the area clips it down the left hand side of the box by Jun Ho turns away from the dead ball line being watched by Matty Pearson rolls it back to Haksabanovic left hand corner of the area plays the ball into the far post but that's a comfortable catch on the bounce for Lee Nichols in the Huddersfield goal 1-1, one, one, 9 to play it was just in between, you know, I thought I thought it's an excellent ball can Keanu Hoover come across, he's watching it all he can see it all, can he get across the face of Lee Nichols there, but the ball just kept on curling towards the goalkeeper and good bravery as well, just comes out and claims it very well, Lee Nichols 1-1 one, one here, 1-1 one, one at the New York Stadium Millwall have equalised at doomed Rotherham, Ryan Longman for Millwall, Bolton 4, Reading 1 Aaron Collins with Bolton's fourth of the afternoon and the comeback's on for Sunderland Sunderland one Blackburn four Chris Rigg 
here at the bet 365 it's 1-1 one, one. and finally poised what have either of these two sides got left in the closing eight minutes or so it's Huddersfield in possession with Matos combining with Kasumu in the centre circle now Pearson takes over chips the ball down the right hand side looking for Brody Spencer good header in field from Spencer can't find Reese Healy he was offside anyway and a free kick to Stoke City back it goes to Everson who passed the ball outside of his area almost had it taken off his toe by Delano Bergsall it's a real risky one that isn't it because it went through, I think it went through the legs of Bergsall with one foot in the air now Reese Healy in the center of the Stoke half receives the ball from Matos Plays it right to Sorba Thomas. Thomas up to the edge of the area. Great turn. Bergsall fires it right footed and blocked behind by McNally for a corner kick. Great turn by Delano Bergsall to buy him the space. But the shot was blocked by McNally, who's hurt himself in the process. 1 1. Well, it's excellent defending. McNally ha sees the danger, gets himself and throws himself at it. Takes a really slow one there. Sorba Thomas into Bergsall. He just rolls his man. He just opens it up and he's got the, he's got the goal, goal at his mercy, but he just doesn't take that shot early enough. And uh, McNally gets over across and gets the block in. I'm not sure whether that's caught Luke McNally in the unmentionables, but um, it's going to be a corner kick all the same to Huddersfield Town in front of their fans in that right hand end at the Caldwell construction end of the ground here at the Bet365 Bet Stadium, even. Sorba Thomas to take the corner kick, right footed, out swinger, deep to the far post. Hellick comes off the top of his head. Kasumu will try and retrieve it out on that far side for Huddersfield, does well, knocks it back to Jackson. Jackson will drill the ball back up to the edge of the area, chested down by Matty Pearson, lobs it into the area, bow to Berger, gets it clear. Ben Wiles goes for goal, ambitiously from fully 30 yards out, but couldn't keep the ball down, it sails over the crossbar for a goal kick. 1-1, one, one, just over five to go. Well, why not? from Ben Wells there, you know, it was bouncing nicely for him, and it's one of them, he just, the technique looked amazing, you know, he's trying to get a little bit of spin on it, but it was always rising, Everson was uh, was comfortable in the, the Stoke City goal. Everson will cart it downfield, the Stoke keeper looking for Mike, put back over his head by Brody Spencer, straight to Michael Rose, Oxford 4, Fleetwood nil big goal for Mark Harris they were just out of the playoffs on goal difference before the start of play Oxford United and they still are because Lincoln are winning as well today 1-1 one, one here forward comes Stoke Jordan Thompson swings a very good cross in from the left hand side Jackson sort of helped it further out the penalty area kept in play by Keanu Hoover down by the corner flag support from Manhoof just back down towards the right hand corner of the penalty area infield it goes to Walter Berger Berger fires it into the box and it's away from my and it's saved by Lee Nichols who bowls it out underarm to Brody Spencer as Huddersfield try and build again from the back so I don't think that's a bad ball from Walter Berger I just think my thought it was for uh, Jun Ho that's running in behind now Ben Wiles fires it forward to Reese Healy just deflected away from him but Bergsall will get into the loose ball for Huddersfield, the Terriers still believe that they can win this game. Infield it goes to Brody Spencer, tries to whip a crossing, blocked by Berger. Spencer gets it back again and rolls it back to Sorba Thomas. Thomas rolls it down the right hand side, too much on that for Matos to catch up with, and it's gone behind for a Stoke goal kick. Four minutes of normal time to go on Talk Sport 2. Stoke 1, Huddersfield 1. He's not had many of them today, Sorba Thomas. I think he's been excellent. You know, I think his distribution, he's. he's he gets on the ball, no matter where he is in the pitch, and he drives at players, he, he, he makes decisions. You know, I think his quality on the ball has been, been outstanding. That one let him down there, but uh, I'll let him off with that. Ender Stevens is going to get a few minutes to replace Wouter Berger at the end of this game. Stevens started the last game up at Hull City on Good Friday. Just to bolster the defensive lines, I think, for Stoke City. Sunderland won Blackburn 5, so the Sunderland comeback didn't last very long. Andy Moran up from the back to score the fifth for Blackburn. And that will definitely be a first three-point haul as Blackburn manager for John Eustace. Notts County 2, MK Dons 3. Ellis Harrison looks to have won it for MK at Meadow Lane. Here come Huddersfield at 1-1, Delano Bergs all right-hand side of the area. Oh, he's got past McNally, can he pull it back to a teammate? Went for goal himself and it was blocked behind for a corner kick. And Stoke players are adamant 
that there was a foul on Luke McNally by Bergsorg. Simpson, the referee, said no. It ends up being a corner, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, Simpson spot on, the referee. I think uh, there was no... McNally just overcommitted. Uh, Bergsorg just kind of allowed him to get in between the ball. He's lost his foot in and then Bergsorg, for me, the wrong decision. I don't understand why he's going for goal. Healy's there. And Tried then not make the keeper, didn't he? It's, poor. it's a poor decision, isn't it? It is a corner, though, to Huddersfield at that right-hand end. Sorber Thomas again with the delivery, headed out to the edge of the box by Ender Stevens. comes out to Jackson. Jackson with the right footed ball, looking again for Sorber Thomas, right-hand side of the area, hooks it back into the Stoke box, only half cleared, one back brilliantly by Brody Spencer. Thomas again with the cross, this time it's blocked by Haksabanovic. Huddersfield trying to turn the screw here. Two minutes to go, 1-1. One, one. Ball up to halfway for Stoke, doesn't find a target. Haksabanovic will now clear to halfway, but that's straight down the throat of Matos. Up goes Matty Pearson to try and win the flick on. Stevens got the better of him. Head tennis now around the centre circle. Doesn't break for Stoke, and then a poor pass from Batos trying to get it out to the right-hand side for Thomas means Stoke have a throw. Rotherham back in front late on against Millwall. 2-1 they lead, Charlie White has the goal for Rotherham that will give them a rare three points as they look set to drop back into League One for next season. Now Bergsor for Huddersfield Town wins it back. Right-hand side, slips it down the right-hand side of the box. Brody Spencer to the dead ball line, wins a corner of Ender Stevens. And they're really working hard at the end of this game, Huddersfield Town, to try and get the three points themselves, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, working very hard without the ball, in, you know, forcing the error. I think Stoke, too many touches, you know, sometimes just put it down the channel with a little bit of quality. Well, I don't think we could, we could accuse Stockpool, uh, uh, we could accuse Huddersfield of being leggy this afternoon. No, like definitely not. second half against yeah. West Brom. They're, they're finishing the stronger, aren't they? And they have a corner at Huddersfield Town. Thomas to take it, right-footed, deep to the far post, nodded down by Pearson, blocked away by Stoke, but again, there's nobody in red and white on halfway, so Jackson can retrieve. Kasumu, left-hand side, right-footed ball into the box, just gone behind Matty Pearson this time, and Haksabanovic will pick up the loose ball for Stoke in his own defensive third, and tuck it back for Ender Stevens, who clears left-footed, but straight onto the head of Matos. Brought down by the chest of Zorba Thomas, who fires the ball across, looking for Bergsorg. Great intended pass, and he almost found his man. And Bergsall will get there in the end. Was he pushed over? No, says the referee. Stoke can try and break. Heading towards added time. 1-1. One, one. Here comes Stoke City with Josh Lauren. Playing the ball into Bajan Ho at the edge of the area. Back to goal. Turns. Slips inside. Haxabanovic tries to lob the keeper and it's over the bar. And it's a goal kick. And we're into four minutes of minimum stoppage time as it stays 1-1 one, one on TalkSport 2. It's an excellent break, isn't it? Fantastic break from Stoke. You know, Josh Lauren just driving all the way. They release it to, to Bajan Ho. I've got to say, I think he's done everything right. Haksabanovic, for me, has to take it to the take it to the line, create the space, and then try and cut it back to find someone there because they had a proper goal. Josh Loren had a proper goal to Haksabanovic there because he's just think one thing in mind: just can he get the shot away? It was wrong decision. So one-one, we're into that four minutes of minimum added time here at the Bet365 Stadium. Can we get a winner here? Stoke had the ball on halfway. Ryan Mike, great ball, almost picked out Manho, but actually that's really well intercepted at the back by Ben Jackson for Huddersfield. Now he's making strides down the Terriers' left-hand side. Plays it ball infield to Kasumu. Stockport lead Wimbledon in League Two. Odin Bailey makes it 1-0 to the Hatters. Sorba Thomas swings the cross in, deflected behind by Michael Rose for a late Huddersfield corner. 1-1, and the Terriers asking the questions again. Well, again, Michael Rose had to make a contact. The ball from Sorba Thomas, excellent. Just in behind uh, the last defender in, in goalkeeper there. Uh, but yeah, timely, timely challenge. Morecambe 2, Barrow 1, Ben Whitfield gets one back for Barrow, maybe too late, Lincoln 3-1 up at Carlisle, Cheltenham behind a hunter Exeter, who scored in the 90th minute through Reese Cole. Late goals going in to affect matters at the top and bottom of League 1 and 2. Here in the Championship, in added time, 1-1 between Stoke and Huddersfield, Huddersfield corner, taken by Thomas to the far post, Hellick gets his head in it, up in the air, it's going to land beyond the roof of the net and behind for a goal kick, and Stoke will want to get on with it because they want to win this game just as much as Huddersfield do, 1-1. One, one. 
Yeah, not a bad ball though again from Sober Thomas and Helic, the danger man. It wasn't a free header, he was under under pressure all the while. He'd be disappointed that he's he's not just steered that goal there. Couldn't couldn't get uh, couldn't go over it. Everson's goal kick. Down goes Mai, who actually fouled Helic and has given Huddersfield a free kick inside their own half. And Lee Nichols is going to take it and he's ushering all the Huddersfield defenders forward. And all the Huddersfield fans are going, come on, everyone come this way towards us. We want you all up here for this free kick. They want the three points, the travelling support away to our right-hand side. Nearly three minutes of the minimum four have been played out. Here's the free kick from Lee Nichols, looking for Helic, an obvious target. Flicked on by Healy, kept in play by Sorba Thomas, down by the corner flag, and he hits the ball against Ender Stevenson. Wins a throw in, not a corner on this near side. Still a chance for Huddersfield to get one last big opportunity, and Reese Healy looks like he's ready to hurl a long throw into the box, drying the ball on his jersey. West Brom equalise against Watford, Darnell Furlong makes it 2-2 at the Hawthorns, here comes the long throw from Reese Healy, claimed though by Everson inside his six yard box and then he fires the ball downfield but Pearson has stayed down he caught the head of Matty Pearson in winning that catch, Daniel Everson and Pearson's holding the back of his head and we can't play on just yet 1-1, well it's good strong goalkeeping from Everson there, came out I've got to say I was surprised with the, the Healy throw it was, it was right on the money but you want your, your, your goalkeeper to be dominant there came out, good hands and took, uh, took him out, didn't he? Well, Pearson's back on his feet, doesn't need any treatment. The ball's been rolled into the empty net, <laughs> that end by Delano Bergsorg, which raised a bit of a cheer from the Huddersfield fans. But it seems, with the four minutes having been played, it's now down to the referee how much more we play on. We're destined for a share of the spoils here between Stoke City and Huddersfield Town. Long ball downfield, going to be flicked on towards halfway. Ryan Mai trying to get a piece of it. It's just hoofed downfield by Keanu Hoover straight into the arms of Lee Nichols. Nichols will clear, right-footed, downfield. Is it kept in play by Healy? Can't keep it in play on this near side. And there goes the full-time whistle. It's honours even between Stoke and Huddersfield. Huddersfield will remain in the championships bottom three but it is an important point for Andre Brighton writer in this game where they did have the lead against Stoke City they led through a brilliant first goal for the club by their striker Bojan Radulovic just before half time brilliant drop of the shoulder inside the box and a very very good finish indeed to see Huddersfield ahead at the break but within five minutes of the restart Stoke were level Kiana Hoover with an equally brilliant goal his third of the season a fantastic left-footed effort from just inside the right-hand side of the box one of the best goals they'll have seen here at the bet 365 this season and let's face it they haven't seen many goals at this stadium well, what's the overall feeling do you think Chris Willemo with the fact that it's on as even here. Yeah, I think it's a fair result. I've never seen uh, enough quality from both sides to, to, to warrant the win. You know, they had opportunities, but yeah, it was they're competitive. I think there'll be positives for both managers uh, to take, albeit I think other results have went against uh, Brighton Raiders, uh, Huddersfield side. But you know what? Like, was it still five points in it from Stoke? You're looking at it from a Stephen Schumacher point of view. So you don't lose the game, that's it. You know, I think you've put another point on the board and you take the positives out of it. But I've got to say, I think uh, showed far too much respect after the start that Stoke City had. They basically conceded possession, they allowed Huddersfield to, to dictate the tempo of the game and rightfully went behind. But what I did see was with good character uh, and Stoke City came out that second half and controlled most of it. They looked like the team that were going to go on and, uh, and, and get the victory at the end. And two great goals we've seen this afternoon, Outstanding Chris. finishes, wasn't it? I think Rudulovic opened his account. Great little bit of trickery in the 18-yard box. You know, got away from, uh, I think it was Rose, wasn't it? And then just puts it into the top right-hand corner. And then Keanu Hoover, we've seen him do it time and time again. You know, I think he's, 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 he's he came from nowhere. He just opened it up on his, uh, take it onto his left, and he just put it right into the top left-hand corner. Left Lee Nichols with no chance whatsoever. It was an outstanding finish. Well, looking elsewhere around the championship, Birmingham have beaten Preston by a goal to nil. Middlesbrough have beaten Sheffield Wednesday 
by two goals to nil. Plymouth have lost at home to Bristol City by a goal to nil. Rotherham, they're still leading against Millwall, even though they're doomed. They're 2-1 up. 1-1 here between Stoke and Huddersfield. QPR are still in front late on at Swansea. So what it means, Chris and if we look at the bottom of the championship, just to round things off, Rotherham bottom on 23, Sheffield Wednesday 39, Huddersfield 40, Plymouth 41, Birmingham 42, Millwall 44, and Stoke and Blackburn both 45. Everybody has now got six games to go. What do you make of it? Oh, it's, this is what it's all about, isn't it? This is why we love the championship. You know, and they're still uh, you're looking at it, I think... Uh, from a Huddersfield point of view, the the, the, the players are still within t- the, the teams are still within touching distance that they can go uh, go on a nice little run, put a win on the board. You just never know. It's it's down. There's, there's poor teams here, but your Birmingham have got a big big win today. That's a fantastic result. Well, that means the UB40 gig that's been planned for <laughs> after full time won't be quite as eggy as it would have been if they got beaten today. But yes, that's a big win and a big goal for young Jay Stansfield. Sheffield Wednesday going down 2-0 at Middlesbrough. Plymouth, I think, I would be concerned if I was a Plymouth supporter because that, since, obviously, they lost their manager, they brought in Ian Foster, their falls completely just, just evaporated on them. And yeah. they lose again today and lose a man. Yeah, it's, it's important, you know, especially if you're losing a, an important figure as well with the red card and suspension. But uh, Foster, you know, he's, he's come in, he's got a brand of football, but it's all about just getting results, just now taking a game at a time rather than trying to implement too much of a style or tweaking too much. Well, Chris, thank you very much, as always, for your input this afternoon. The live football will continue from the Championship over on Talk Sport. Remember, Adrian Derren is about to give you a full classified check of this afternoon's results on Talk Sport. And then it's off to Portman Road for Ipswich Town against Southampton. Joe Shannon and Dean Ashton, your commentators there in Suffolk. And as soon as that's done on Talk Sport, we will then head for Ellen Road. Leeds United will take on Hull City. (coughs) <coughs> excuse me, at 8pm, Jim Proudfoot and Lucy Ward, your commentary team for that game. Coming up next here on Talk Sport 2, it's the women's football show with Leanne Sanderson and her former Arsenal teammate, Jilly Flaherty. But the full-time score here at the Bet365 in the Championship on your home of the EFL Talk Sport 2 was Stoke City 1, Huddersfield Town 1. Slides into the box, Radulovic looking to make room, scores brilliantly. Oh, what a goal! What a time to open your account for your new club, Bojan Radulovic. A touch from Kiana Hoover brings it into the box. Left for the effort, what a goal! Kiana Hoover! No chance whatsoever. What a finish! It's all square, 1 1. EFL Live on TalkSport 2 with McDonald's. Fancy a Big Mac for the big match? Order McDelivery now on the McDonald's app and get tasty reward points delivered too. 18 plus. Rewards account required. Participating restaurants. Subject to availability. Delivery fees and terms apply. At Morrison's, get any four for £5 from over 30 frozen products. From bird's eye garden peas, potato waffles, Goodfellas pizzas, plus many more. That's more easy peasy teas sorted. Morrison's to shop at Morrison's. Majority of stores and online subject to availability. Selected lines ends 14th of April. The following are assembly instructions for a day trip at IKEA this Easter. Take eight plump meatballs at least and one bed that doubles as a bouncy castle. Add free 45 minutes room planning sessions. As many activities for kids as possible. And add one extra slice of dime cake. Combine all together and you have the perfect day out at IKEA. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. This spring, Plusnet are buzzing to tell you about full fibre. Oh, it's a V. Our latest and four fastest broadband. With speeds up to 900 megabytes and absolutely no activation fees. That's a plus. Offer ends 3rd of April. Save time and make a beeline straight to Plusnet for our best price. New customers only, 24-month contract, limited availability, terms apply. If you leave your customers happier than Larry, if you always take your boots off at the door, if you tend to get given the good biscuits, 
you might have what it takes to join the Trust a Trader professionals. Millions of people use trustatrader.com to find reputable, recommended tradespeople like you. So if you're looking for more business and even more good biscuits, apply to join us at TrustTrader.com. McDonald's winning sips is back with millions of prizes up for grabs again, like Coke glasses, Mackey's merch, festival tickets, or even one of our weekly 10 grand cash prizes. <laughs> 